Okay, Constant Gardeners, session three, with two new folks. So who, who of the new people have you guys played Blades in the Dark before? Yep, I've yeah. played and, and, and I've also run Blades before. Okay, and what was that, Tyler? I have not, no. You have not? Do you know the no. game at all? Uh, I know, I know the basics, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Okay, so the, the concept of this is that it's a Blades in the Dark hack for cyberpunk and climate fiction. So you're all, you know, folks in the underworld who are trying to claw back power from other factions in the city, except that you're in a massive district this, that is like roughly the size of LA with the same population in each district, and you're sort of quarantined to each district. You guys are in what's called the Green District, or colloquially known as the Roots, which is primarily comprised of climate refugees who have fled massive acts of God as climate change has uh, rapidly changed the earth as we know it and the way that people live. And so you're all in, you can, if you picture like a blades or not blades, sorry, a uh, Blade Runner um, aesthetic except with a much more cultural milieu going on. It's not all um, Asian centric like in the eighties because they feared Japan taking over <laughs> the North America. Instead, it's, uh, instead it is a mishmash of cultures because so many refugees from all over have fled to this one place. So you can picture tons of signs in many different languages, different shops, uh, plenty of different ethnicities, etc. Uh, one of the major things that sets this apart, um, which will be a little bit annoying slash confusing for our play tests, is the character sheets are a little bit different than the ones that you're seeing on your uh, Roll20 sheets, just because the Roll21s are just vanilla blades in the dark. And the uh, Hack the Planet ones, we use different actions um, but it's it's quite similar. A major difference uh, in departure, though, is you'll have a root. Um, so do you guys have the file open that I sent you in Hangouts for the Playtest bundle, I think it's called? Or yeah. no, it's just called Hex. Quick Start? Yeah, so there's the Quick Start, and then there's mm -hmm. also the one that is like a bundle of um, it starts with the reference sheets that looks like blades, and then below though, there's like a whole bunch of playbooks that are specific to hack the planet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, Colin, do you have that or Tyler? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm getting it up. Right now. Okay, sounds good. So the main difference is um, you'll have a root, and they all sound kind of weird. <laughs> the the root is how you came to the city. So you can be a tipper, a grasshopper, foundation, wet, forged, and unknown. And the differences are uh, basically stratification of class, but also how you came to be in the city. So a tipper is sort of like a pejorative that people use for people who contributed to climate change and are genera uh, generally the previous generation of people. So they're kind of like older, think maybe 50 and up probably, maybe 45 to and up. And so they fled to the city and are also kind of hunted by tracers and if people find out that you're a tipper, essentially it's a, it's a bad deal. People don't like you. If you're a grasshopper, it means that you came to the city by way of land. If you are wet, it means that you came by the, to the city by way of uh, the, uh, by water. So probably by a great body of water to the east of the city is the uh, Atlantic. So probably that way. Foundation means that you are, a part of the city since the beginning. So maybe you're a laborer constructing it or one of the people that initially moved to the city when it was being constructed, stuff like that. And that is kind of like the higher class status in the game. Uh, forged means that you 
were raised in a territory away from Shelter One. There's a bunch of communities away from it who um, are called Forge because they endured the acts of God by themselves. And each community has sort of got their own human ingenuity and in how they um, dealt with their own climate change and whatever effects are going on there. So essentially, you're still a little bit of an outsider within the city because you belong to a community outside of it. And um, there's a little bit of a pejorative that comes with that as well because the people kind of think that you don't need to be here. Like the green district is already packed full of refugees and you're adding to this already packed situation when you already have a home outside of it. But you're all a part of the underworld um, doing these various jobs. This particular crew are a crew of cleaners, which are mercenaries for hire. So you're all, you know, somewhat criminals anyway. The route is basically just a, a flavor of you choosing what your uh, delineation of class is going to be, as well as... Um, just like flavor for our, our game, especially for a one shot for you all. It's not something too big, but I wanted to highlight it. And so one of you, I can't remember which made a lens, right? Like the yeah, tracker? Yeah, I did. You did? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yes. And did, did you I'm, have any... I'm in the middle of making a quirk. A quirk? Okay, sounds good. So do you, uh, Tyler, how um, into character creation are you? Are you pretty much done or... I think I'm pretty much done, yeah. Cool. Okay. Do you yeah. want to introduce your character then? Sure thing. Uh, so my character's name is Jackson Jewell. Uh, his alias is Bullet. Um, he uh, He's an old white man. Basically looks like John Hurt. Um, and uh, his root is that he's a tipper uh, from a military background. Um Let's see, what else? His vice is an obligation. I'm not entirely sure who to. I was thinking either a, a local crime family or maybe uh, the, the friend. Like the, yeah, the, the friend or person I'm close to. I don't know. Sure, like one remember. of the friends that you chose? Yes. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. And which friend did you choose? Uh, so my... My good friend, or the one I'm close to, is uh, Adia, a data runner. Okay. And um, I think that we've got sort of a mentor-mentee relationship. Um, and uh, so she's, I think she's probably the only sort of family I've got. And then uh, the rival or enemy or what have you is Javier, ostensibly a spook. Uh, cool. who I think had a similar relationship with with Jackson um, a number of years ago and then probably betrayed him in some oh. fashion. Sounds um, good. Possibly dealing with the, the tipper route. Gotcha. Cool. And let's see. What uh, special ability did you choose? I chose the scout ability when you gather info to locate a target you get plus one effect and when you hide in a prepared position or use camouflage you get plus one d to rolls in regards to avoiding detection cool sounds good and since this is like uh, like i'm gonna keep your guys's uh characters on this roll 20 thing forever but we're not sure when you'll we'll see you again right so if you end up in a situation where you're like, damn, I wish I had that move, uh, just change it to that one because it's just a, sure. a one-off anyway, right? Might as well get as much fun as, out of this as you can. Don't feel constrained to your choices too much. And let's see. I think that's good then. What about uh, you, Colin? Uh, one second. Uh... Uh, I am playing a quirk, um, and name, uh, 
Surya. Uh, it's a woman, uh, uh, woman ad- identified, uh, but has this kind of woman, but she's a bit kind of butchy, rugged, like she's seen a bunch. Um, she's a uh, um, forged. Um, she comes from a community um, of uh, she comes from a community of of sea pirates mainly uh, who managed to uh, um, and that's like a, a it's also the thing that like uh, uh, one of the things is the is your in the quirk is the uh, hidden means to the forge. So I was thinking some sort of like knowing some of like the underground, like sewer water ways or whatever that get out to the coast that it can kind of get to like the kind of coastal forged communities. Um, and um, I took the special ability proprietary tech cause it's just kind of too cool to pass up. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, so she's, um, and she's ki- kind of like, uh, in, you know, kind of goes in and out and has connections to her community. Her, her vice, um, uh, her vice is, uh, I'm thinking something about just like hunting down, uh, uh, the acts of God in a lot of ways and just like information about the acts of God and survivors of it. So kind of a weird thing where she just like likes to hear like stories about the acts of God and constantly like talking to people and about them. Mm, Cool. Yeah, that sounds good. And what about your friends? Uh, Yes. Friends. Um, So a looking here, the reclaimer is someone who, gets water right a reclaimer or like salvagers that go out and um there's scavengers who like sort of find the things and then reclaimers are like people who would recover massive or hard to get uh things they're like think of them as like the navy seals of salvagers or something i would totally be a friend with a reclaimer it makes a lot of sense um so i'll write that yeah, I guess I'll write that in notes. Uh, and and uh, da, da. Um, what's a gardener and a sorcerer? A gardener is just actually a gardener. Sorcerers are okay. people that look for new uh, underground pathways that hold water, like springs and. Um, or a way to um, like cut away from an existing river or source to get it to where it's going. Okay. Um, I'll say, yeah, I'll say Ren is my, uh, uh, my, uh, uh, not, what, it's not an enemy. It's just like, or rival, as like, a rival, yeah. So essentially, like um, the Ren sources, uh, it, like looking for sources of water, and like they're they're kind of like battling in the same territory as some of like my forged cousins, essentially. And like, and you know, we're trying to source water, and Ren has in the past, uh, you know, basically stolen some of our water resources in in their own sourcing. So. Cool. Okay. That sounds good. So, uh, would it, would it be helpful for the, uh, returning players to tell you guys about their characters too, or or have you already watched the, I started to, but I didn't get through it. So, okay. How about, uh, Matthias, do you want to start? Sure. Uh, I'm playing the Steve who is, um, uh, uh, so he's a torque creator and saboteur. Um, he has a kind of a working class background and uh, tries to uh, set himself apart as much as possible from that. Um, 
and he's he's your basic um uh kind of inventor gearhead uh type of um character um and uh well we really haven't seen seen his vice um uh in play yet um so i guess that's uh that's the gist of it okay and mike yeah so uh my character is yeji uh she is a fuse so kind of our uh, sneaky stealthy person uh she was part of the um the underworld in the forged she was uh, essentially she's like a a 70 year old korean woman uh <laughs> and uh yeah so like craggy wrinkled skin all of that um she was like a a big player like a a, a tool in the underworld in the forged um, but has lost uh, definitely a few steps um, with her age at this point. Um, and she's also uh, coming in from the Forge community, picked up some type of um, disease um, that is killing her. Um, so she's essentially, her goal here is kind of uh, to get one last big score. Um, and yeah, I think that kind of, goes through her she's probably the most like violently inclined of the bunch that we've met so far uh and i feel bad about that but uh i think yeah that's her background um yeah well the quirk has a military background now so maybe maybe there's another person on the crew there we yeah go. I'm, I'm i'm a little uh backstabby <laughs> <laughs> Oh wait, do you have a military background as well? I have an underground background. I'm a Oh okay. I'm a, I have the military background. Oh, you have the military one. Okay. Yes, the lens. I'm a pirate, so yeah, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. So, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um So the the aim and tone of the game, the aim is similar to Blades in the Dark. We're going to be playing underworld people who are executing jobs and we're still having the same mission of playing to find out the characters, especially this is just episode three. So a lot of things are still quite nebulous with us. Uh, tone so far we've, we have been getting a little bit darker as we've gone. <laughs> the, the last thing that we saw this crew do was um, they jacked a truck that is going to be carrying a, um, encrypted smart vault or is what they're called and basically they're posing as the guards after having killed them and put them in the alley and we all kind of find found that out just as it happened <laughs> so uh they've also been pitting their exploits on the coil which are a group of uh they're called dippers and basically they skim data lines of a corporation in another more uh, like the corporate district basically that control all flows of information and they're sort of like hacking and skimming that information and then selling it um, but maybe not for too much longer because the last two jobs have been pinned on <laughs> pinned on the coil essentially with this crew and the last thing that we saw was everything was going pretty well they had rolled up in the truck they had convinced the guards that they're supposed to be there. Uh, the Steve had this cool contraption that unfolded where they needed to put their thumbs on these um, things that would take a um, imprint of their nanites. And they had already pre-programmed them to be the guards that they had just killed. And the last thing that happened, though, was uh, the Steve's one had kind of lit up red and it wasn't working and that's the cliffhanger that we had just um ended on which is kind of funny so the nice thing about this game though is that you're all very competent people and you've probably already thought of something like this happening and have worked around it most likely of course yeah um, yeah i have an idea how to resist this yeah i figured you um. would <laughs> <laughs> 
and to up up the uh, up the stakes a little bit, I think. Okay. Um, so here's what I'm thinking. Um, uh, when we open back up on on the episode, uh, we get the shot um, of from behind Steve, like uh, onto his shoulders, and kind of pan back, and there's the two guards standing to each side. Um, and he does like almost like a magician would, right? Throwing his hands out and pulling his sleeves down, putting the thumb down again, and then it does the um, the, the the chippy confirmatory um, sound, and uh, we hear uh, the release of something, something sliding up and above. And then we see how, um, uh, like, some compartment has opened up, and the Steve um, on the spot turns around, holding a pistol in each of his hands, <laughs> pointing it uh, straight at the guards' faces. Oh, um, that's a different kind of resistance than I expected. <laughs> I thought you were just going to be like, I try again and it works or something. <laughs> but <laughs> now I have weapons. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah. Because so you... like one thought here is um, to um, what I want to enable is for the other two to be able to leave the truck now. They couldn't before because that would have been, well, there are another two people around, right? Yeah. Um, and... Uh, yeah, and the idea is, I guess, like if I roll badly here, um, <laughs> the, the guards might like respond immediately and take me down or something like that on this scene. Mm -hmm. Well, you're, aren't you just resisting? Yeah, I'm resisting, but it might accrue to my like the rolls oh, only go bad, right. right? That's true. Let's see how much stress you get. Yeah. So what do you? What would you say? What attribute is this? Um. So, Sounds like quickness or yeah, being, or having forethought. I don't know. It could be either, honestly. It could be... Hmm, is What is the main goal of it? Is it to intimidate them? Yeah, to, to, to basically be in a position of, well, I have a gun um, aimed at your face, so <laughs> um, that I might be in a good position to control them, to tell them, yeah. okay? Okay, so it sounds like probably resolve then, hey? Uh, resolve? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Is this something where I can aid or? Uh, no, it's a resistance okay. roll. Yeah, but it uh, the Steve rolled really well anyway. Yeah. Steve yeah. only took one stress for that. <laughs> so sweet. We we come. It's a. Yeah, it's a, it's as you say, and then um, I I'll let you guys uh, the new people. Oh, also, it helps me a lot if you guys can click on the uh, my settings on uh, roll twenty, and then change your display name to your character's name, and then the pronouns. Like uh, if you see at the bottom, UG and the Steve have it like that. If you could do that, that'd be excellent. It's just a good. Uh, place for all the characters to look so when they're trying to talk to each other and when I'm addressing you it's it's easier well, we mentioned what we're here for right the the vault the yeah we're trying to steal a sample yeah yeah the sample of what of a new type of um uh, obscure no not obscure screen uh, screen yeah. Uh, that's much more powerful or better. We don't actually know what it like. Yeah. And screen is um in this world with climate change, the sun is like uh quite a lot hotter. You can't like stay out in it, it'll burn you quite quickly. And screen is a drug that everybody takes, especially manual laborers and people out at sea and stuff like that where you'd inject it and essentially your pores secrete this thing that protects you from the sun. And it's kind of like onyx purplish looking. It That's, has a different... I probably totally want that. Yeah. Considering. <laughs> yeah. That I want it. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Okay. So I'll let you guys, Jackson and is it Cryas? Uh, 
uh, Syria. Syria. I'll let Syria and Jackson decide where you are, but you do have this fictional position that this Steve opened up where you could just be in the back of the truck for sure. Um, another thing, the, the edge could, or the lens could definitely be in some position sniping or whatever you want to be doing as well. Yeah, that's sort of what I was thinking. Um, sure. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll be, yeah, so I'll be in the back of the truck. Is it, is it just the two guards? There's four that, guards. Uh, there are four guards. All right. So, um, I think I might take a shot at one of the others. Okay. One of the ones that, uh, the Steve is not aiming at. Cool. As a sort of, it, so is it, is the, well, it'll be, let's see. If you look at the lens, mm -hmm. Um, instead of hunt, which on your sheet you would hit hunt. Yeah. Uh, oh, also, let's make sure that, uh, especially Tyler, did you assign all the action dots that you might need in the game? Yes, I believe so. I, I did have one question about uh, the cybernetics because um, mm -hmm. I have an extra one in the hunt by default. Is that as the cybernetics mm -hmm. or do I add another? Um, so at character creation, you can only have two uh, maximum in any stat. Okay. But uh, the ones that are already there are just the, the... It's just basically kind of showing what you're already good at. Sure. And okay. usually will reference some of the special abilities in your, uh, in your uh, abilities that you might be able to take. So... You can only have a maximum of two in a particular stat, and then you yeah. should be able to ascribe four more, and the fourth one is a cybernetic one. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, and yeah, I think I'm, I'm good. Okay, cool. So if you're taking a shot at long distance, that's called tracing. And right. on your sheet, it'll be the same as hunt. Okay. And... Um, so you can push yourself, which is to take two stress for one extra die or mm. to increase your effect. Um, you're sniping. So I think you're in a controlled position. And mm. are you using your fine long range rifle? Yes. For this? yes so am. mark that off in your items. And also yeah. both of you need to decide what your load is. My load is normal. Yeah. I've normal? got a heavy load. Heavy load. Oh, okay. Sounds good. And so you would mark off your fine long range rifle and mm -hmm. probably your fine scope. Yes. But see how the fine scope is in italics? It means that it doesn't count towards your load. You just okay. have that. It's a, a thing that you can have. And optionally, you have parish ammo, which mm -hmm. it's in a bold in this character sheet to show that if you use it, you actually accrue plus one heat after the fact because it's something that is like, uh, think of it as like a banned substance. It's black market materials and tracers, uh, which are essentially the blade runners and the like, yeah. the cops of the setting are um, their eyes and the system, the surveillance and stuff looks for traces of this. So it increases yeah. your heat automatically. But the cool thing about Parish Ammo is that it, basically um, turns the people that you shoot into um, fragments of carbon. So it's pretty oh. cool. <laughs> so it's up to you if you want to use it or not. But I, uh, uh, I think I, I don't think so. Not for this one. Okay. Anyway, uh, cool. And are you pushing yeah. yourself? Um, yeah, I think so. Cool. So, so if you click on hunt, it'll ask you what your position is. Mm -hmm. And you just put in controlled. controlled. Yeah. And then if you're using uh, your push yourself to give you greater effect, then you're going to move it from normal to great, or you can keep it at normal. And then on the next menu, it'll ask you if you have bonus dice and you just put in one for that. Okay. That's your choice. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll do the great effect then. Cool. Oh, let's see what you get. Oof. That's not great. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. Not. Cool. <clears throat> so the good thing is you're in a controlled position, though. That's if you're yeah. going to fail a roll, that's where you want to be. <laughs> so let's see. On a four or five, you hesitate, withdraw, and try a different approach, or else do it with a minor consequence. 
a minor complication occurs, you have reduced effect, you suffer lesser harm, or you end up in a risky position. So I think, hmm. I think what ends up happening is when uh, the last thing that we saw the last uh, time and why uh, the Steve drew the weapon right away was um, the when the Steve erred on that uh, test, I also narrated that the guy was kind of going for his weapon a little bit too, but Steve was super quick and put the gun in the guy's face, right? I think when that happened though, it also um, started bringing down this sort of like metal grate. And so you're lining up your shot and right when you're like, we get the camera fisheye lens of your scope with the, the bead on the guy's face or wherever you're aiming, but then the grate like lowers right in front of it and you miss your chance as you're about to take the shot. The nice thing is, though, is that in this game, there's resisting consequences. So if you can think of a way that you could resist that consequence, you can tell me and roll your um, resistance roll, just like the Steve did. And you would take stress to cancel out that complication. Can I just try to shoot through the grates? Mm. Would that stop the grate from coming down, though? No. What about no? What I... about what about instead of um, like you you miss the opportunity to take your headshot right? But yeah. instead of the great lowering, what if you were like such a good marksman or whatever that you take out one of the gears or something that's lowering it or something, and then next time you'll have a shot because you'll okay. it won't be lowering. Sure. Yeah. All right. I can. I'm down with that. Okay. And so, so that sounds like probably insight to me. Does that sound good to you? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, so you would click on the insight um, mm -hmm. letter on your stat, and it will do the roll for you. No bonus dice. Bam. Okay, so you crit. <laughs> Okay, interesting. So normally on a resistance roll, when you crit, you clear stress. So you should have two, and now you'll have one. Right. And I think it's always like it feels kind of numb or whatever that you only get to like clear one stress usually on a crit with resistance. So as a bonus, I'll also say that you're kind of setting up perhaps whatever it is that Syria is going to do. We'll see what they want to do. So Syria, what do you do? So can you describe like the setting again? Uh, sure. It's like a huge warehouse. Okay. Um, the it's um, inside. I had described it sort of like a Indiana Jones warehouse thing where they had all those crates lined up and all that totally. kind of stuff. And then one of the guards had kind of a futuristic lift thing that was just like floating above the ground with this mm -hmm. um, special looking crate. It had a different appearance and had a mark on it that was NL or ML, which is manufactured light, which is the uh, institution in this setting that manufactures screen. Okay. Um, so you had known already that this is like the stuff that you need. Right. Um, and you just needed to clear that, um, that test, but then things went sideways. The Steve pulls the gun, all that kind of stuff. Uh, right now you're close to the docks. It's a huge warehouse that kind of looks like a bunker. It's got that metal grate that ha is going to start going down, but then gets the gear shot out by your, uh, by Jackson jewel. And Good. um so we're yeah. are we that so we're are we outside of the warehouse then? Basically? You guys are inside and the truck oh, is parked just a little bit outside. So our truck is parked a little bit outside. Yeah. Yeah. Um and we're all inside right now and uh seeing yeah. and uh basically he was taking the shot to like make sure that we can get out again or with that. Yeah, rate? and I th and I think also setting up to be able to take the shot in the future if, if need be, right? Right, okay. So, 
<sighs> All right. Uh, so I'm inside, uh, and there's a guard and a lift. And is there in just the one guard right now, or? There's four guards, and there's four of your uh, comrades, and basically there was like a device that had sprung up from the tool set that St the Steve brought in, uh -huh. and everybody's uh, hands were on it, being scanned essentially, mm -hmm. except for, uh, um, and then right behind it is the crate with the lift on it, and then the Steve had pulled a gun, I think, on two people, right, Steve? Oh. You have like a pistol on two of their heads or whatever. All right. So. Uh, and what do the guards look like they're doing? Are they, re what's their reaction right now? Um, I think you know what would be part of the plan here at this point was that um, me taking control of the guards, um, the next thing I would be doing is mm -hmm. getting them turned around and uh, disarmed and that kind of stuff, right? Like, I'd be moving um, them uh, into a corner. While... Okay, so you're, you're trying to command. You're, you want to get them to like go back without like violence, essentially, ideally. Yeah, basically, um, uh, uh, make sure they are not a problem. While whatever the rest of you kind of try to find where we need to go and that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, like, like um, head away towards the sample. Uh. But they're not yet doing that. Um, no, yeah, uh, I think you all are acting in the same sort of. Right. Uh, I, I'm. I'm. Uh, uh, I was already planning on having my character having like a good command score, so I'm going to. Um, uh, I'll, well, you I'll could say, also uh, take that over, and yeah, I was. I'm going to like. Yeah. I'm. I'm basically going to like uh, step out, uh, looking at my action. My weird quirk stuff uh sure uh, and um uh i um i basically like like so he's got his, his gu guns to out and i basically just like walk out like uh with a couple uh, blades drawn and just looking really uh, tough and so, uh, and like don't, say, don't fuck with us, basically. Yeah, don't fuck with us. And basically, like, <laughs> says, and basically say, like, no one has to get hurt, but you guys have to leave for that to happen. And uh, so I'm going to roll control for that. Uh, sure. And we'll say that that's exactly when the grate stops going down and then the shot gets hit. Uh -huh. And you, you'll have... Uh, I'll, I'll increase your position from desperate to risky for that. And Great. effect. All right. So I just click on command to roll then? Is that how it works? Yeah. yeah. And then it'll ask you for the position, the effect, and then a bonus die. And so somebody could try to assist you or you could push yourself. Mm -hmm. to take two stress for one bonus die or increased effect, your choice. Right. Let's see. So I could add two... I could add... Was it two stress to increase? Yeah, so you could put two stress on your character sheet and then you could tell me I'm going to take an extra dice, uh, a die on that. Or increase your effect from standard to great effect. Um, I can also help you with an assist here. Yeah, and it looks like like within the fiction that seems to be what's going. Yeah, on. that, that makes, that makes, that makes, it makes sense with massive yeah, time yeah. with his guns, and I'm just like stepping forward, looking like uh, yeah, hard ass butch with knives. So yeah, so. Um, yeah, are you going to add an extra D with your push or go for great effect? Um, let's let's go for let's go for great effect. It'd be nice to just get these yeah. guys out of here. Let's risk it and do that. Sure, and you're already and getting I'll, an extra D. So. Yeah, yeah. For I'm, me, yes. I'm assisting with because I'm there and just being the threat uh, that you can utilize. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. When you tell them what they need to do. Sounds good. Uh, and, uh, all right. And I click submit for risky. Effect is great. And one die. And then one bonus die. Yep. Great. Ooh. <laughs> so I think. Where are the oh there's there's the results go oh yeah that was a terrible roll <laughs> <laughs> yes it was not great so uh, just to be transparent I'll, I like to read uh, what my options are on each action roll when things are failed uh, so on a risky roll things go badly you suffer yep. harm a complication occurs you end up in a desperate position you lose this opportunity <laughs> so. I think what happens is the um, shot for the gear has an unintended uh, effect in that they're like already kind of spooked instead of it being, uh, it could have gone like either way. It could have been super intimidating, but instead I think the two guards on the peripheral that, uh, that don't have the guns in their faces, the ones with guns in their faces are definitely not going for their guns, but the two beside them, like on e either end of this lineup of four guards, Mm -hmm. um, I think the one closest to you, the shot rings out and he sort of flinches and he goes for his gun mm -hmm. and then he just, uh, he takes a, it looks like a, um, let's see, do I want branding now? It looks like a, a like futuristic hand pistol that is um uh, it looks corporate it has an s on it for safety which is like a the corporation a, a big corporation that manufactures all the gun on it and it goes into like bullet time and we see the hammer eject or come back and like hit the bullet and it goes in slow motion and then we follow the bullet as it's going and it nails you like right in the shoulder and you'll take uh it'll be three harm, but you have uh, ways of mitigating that in the game. So right. I can do, um, I can try to resist that and whatnot. Yes. So you could resist it. Um, we haven't, I don't think we've had resistance with harm just yet. And that's a good way of setting the tone for our game. So we can talk about that. Do you guys think that this is the type of tone where uh, resistance would elude all harm or uh, bring it down. Probably I'll bring it down. Yeah, I'm all for bringing it down. Okay, sounds good. So you have armor and you've got your normal load. So your resistance I can, roll. I so yeah, I can I I can devise to have armor if I want, basically with my normal load. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So right. with three harm, you could resistance to get it to two, and then you could also mark your armor to get it down to one. Um, and then if you want to go all out, you could basically mark all of your um, load to go with heavy if you haven't already marked stuff. But oh, you already said you um, have blades though, I'm right? Gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do not heavy armor and just do, I haven't marked everything down yet. So, but I'll, I'll say that I have the base armor and mark it so to drop it, to drop it down by one then. Cool. And then you're going to resist it as well? Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to resist as well. Cool. So because I was assisting, am I suffering a similar consequence? Mm, I don't think that this guy is a, that much of a quick draw. <laughs> I don't think he could get off two shots. Um, so yeah, you're just getting punished in that your friend's getting shot. <laughs> Uh, so is this a, uh, uh, I think it would be, um, I think it would be a, probably a prowess, like a combat makes sense. Ghost type thing makes the most sense for me. Yeah. Makes sense. Cool. Uh, let me roll that. And no bonus dice, so go. Ah, God, I'm just rolling terrible here. Excellent. Yeah. 
So you take five stress for that. Nice. And you'll mark uh, one harm. <laughs> so it. what is it? Uh, what do we see on camera, though? Like, instead of it, you know, being as bad as the audience once thought, it's um, mitigated a little bit, right? Right. Yeah. So the um, my character for their cyberware has, like, basically, like, wired nerves that, like, help with my skirmish. Um, and uh, I react, like, kind of unnaturally quick. So that happens, and I... Um, and you, you see you see this, like, look on my face of, like, oh, this is nothing. I can get out of the way of this, you know? And I, like, go... And, like, I go to move, um, and it was, like, aiming, and I go to move really fast and like kind of like drop down on the ground but like it's not fast enough and it like it it was definitely like targeting like directly head on but it like uh say it, like it hits my it hits my uh my upper arm and like you know blood yeah. fl blood flies out and i like it that like super fast amazing dodge goes to like me just like tumbling on the ground really as i get hit well, in the shoulder I think with one harm, it's just a graze, you could say. Yeah, right? like, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. It's, it's it's just like it's not a like I, I tumble on the ground and like get back up, but like, oh, you know, okay. or get back up into that like you know fancy crouching position that looks always great in movies, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, the turns to you and, and they're and like, I, and I, like with this like pissed off look in my face and my arm arm dripping some blood. So, right, Gabrache turns to you and they're like, "You move like they do." I've never seen anyone move like that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> not fast enough. <laughs> yeah, not fast enough. Okay, Yeji. So things are escalating quickly. <laughs> yeah, because I'll be dropping those two that I'm aiming the gun set, right? Yeah, at I think so, too. Yeah. Um, so here, I guess this is kind of a question that I want to bounce back to the group. Is Do you think we would have planned for the possibility that things would have gone south like this? Or... Oh, this is, we're completely yeah. on plan. Okay. Because <laughs> yeah. so... I know we're also somewhat confident in our skills, and so I would. Yeah. I was just wondering. Um, so yeah. I don't know how you feel. Maybe this is the distraction for you. Well, that's how I'm feeling. I'm just... Yes. My question is kind of like what my motivation is. Like either I'm I'm headed out because that is on plan, or I'm headed out because I think it's also been established that Yeji does not like like the direct attention. Mm -hmm. um, and so she could just be like, yeah, this is not my scene. Um, and is going to just like go work on the, the actual target. Um, well, I think with a with a sniper there, you know, you might be comfortable that that everything's still sort of under control. Right. Mm hmm. He's relatively speaking. Yeah. <laughs> Everything oh. is according to plan until you go <laughs> totally. <laughs> so yeah, I think certainly uh, Yeji is slinking off and looking for the, uh, they were like injectors, right? Um, now, is that, what well, you were saying that there's like that crate on the lift that has the ML logo, is that like the target right there or would the target be elsewhere? That is the target, yeah. Okay. When you guys were gathering information, uh, Gabrash had found that so i'm not going to take that away from you all it's a uh, yeah. yeah the crate is like maybe up to uh, like crotch level and maybe just like a meter probably in a perfect square um would okay so i think my goal is to just get to the crate here um sure. my thought is maybe we've scouted out and alternate way out sure um so that i if uh, yeah assuming that there might be a frenzy um that launches um the idea was that i would not go back through that um if i was able to get the score um okay so you're just gonna go for the lift and then just like run with it basically yeah kind of like maybe go further into the building essentially to get out um while um whatever is going on at the entrance here and like everything is kind of all the attention of the facility is sort of gathered towards the entrance. I think um, I would 
be confident and daring enough in my stealthy evasion skills to kind of work my way past um, the chaos moving past me. Okay. Then you're a fuse? I am a fuse. Cool. So um, are you ghosting? Am I ghosting? Uh, um, yes. That is exactly what I am doing. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And is there any items or anything that could help you get more effect here? Um, probably not. No. What about muting tech? What will the muting tech do for me? Well, they basically you turn it on and then when you're running for this thing or whatever, nobody hears anything, right? Oh. It's something that you attach to your clothes and then yeah. like it makes no sound. So I'm assuming that uh, like the guard that is closest to you on the far right side, he is going to be uh, turning towards, you know, the person who just got shot and stuff. And then we could do the thing where like, you know, the camera looks with him, like his POV looking at uh, this, the uh, Syria who gets shot. And then when he looks back, you're just like gone, right? <laughs> if it works out anyway. <laughs> yeah. And if it doesn't, yeah. I mean, that's what resistance rolls are for, right? <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've still got a slot open on my load. So yeah. that. So if you use muting tech, I'll give you great effect. I think it's still a little bit risky because the guy's pretty close to you and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're just trying to to uh, get away from him and get to the the uh, the lift or whatever, right? To to sort of just like beeline it out of there mm -hmm. with with it. Okay. Cool. Um. Yeah. So I'm rolling that. Nice. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I guess this is what separates the crews a little bit. No, <laughs> cool. Okay. So increased effect, which means that you have extreme effect because I already gave you great. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. So what do you, what do you want for your great effect? I'm willing um, to hear things out. Well, okay. So I can see two things. You tell me what makes more sense. Maybe I take a slash at one of these, characters as I'm moving, like, so I have realized that I've gotten by without, like, any detection at all. Um, so there's kind of an opportunity to sort of help the the rest of the group here in, um, yeah, debilitating one of their foes in some way. Or conversely, like, I feel like maybe I just, I'm able to also, like, pop the top of the, the crate and, like, rummage through all that shit uh and um yeah well you guys already know that the the thing that you're stealing is an actual like smart vault so it, it oh probably, it, okay yeah it's like gonna be a fairly big thing it's not gonna be something that you can just like palm and get out or something okay. like that yeah. but and especially since you're ghosting what if we see like what if the additional effect you can tell me if you like this or not what if the guy goes to grab at his futuristic handgun like the other thing and it's gone because when you left you also grabbed his gun. oh grabbed his weapon yeah no i think yeah. that makes a lot of sense yeah yeah because because it's a ghosting thing that you're doing right <laughs> so cool all right so knowing that this is a smart vault uh thing do you want to narrate what you do make it seem as cool as you like um Tell me what a smart vault thing is other than being a... It's a, like, picture, picture like, a wall safe, except that to get into it and crack it, you need, like, um, essentially a USB key-looking thing that will, like, hack it in order to open it. So it's not, like, a, a physical thing. It's more of, like, a digital code. And mm -hmm. the, the uh, crypt, uh, cryptographers in the setting... Basically, they're the people that are, they're basically like white hack or white hat haunts who have like gone and worked for the man and now continually make their uh, like cash and jewels and stuff like that by um, coming up with the best encryption software and stuff like that. Mm. And you will notice that you have fine crypto lock picks. That is yeah. what is that is for. <laughs> sure. 
So that's all my load. Um, yeah. So. So yeah, like I think like, I mean, initially, like I am sort of like running towards this thing. I think I use one of my blades to actually like get the this guy's gun. Um, right. That it kind of like through the, I mean, what do you call that? The hole for the trigger. Um, sure. Like just kind of like the blade, just kind of like snip that through there and kind of like turn it around, maybe uh, catch a glance from one of the, the other members of the party um, and they are impressed by that. Um, <laughs> um, nice. And uh, yeah, I mean, Yeji is also uh, probably a little showy when she gets confident about this stuff and maybe kind of like as she's like working through these like crates, maybe kind of does like a wall spring kind of thing like back and forth um, as she just kind of like moves like a, yeah, like a gazelle um, through this um, and gets to the safe. And um, yeah, I feel like is, yeah, like very like quickly and smoothly just like transitioning the blade down the gun down like and pulling out these the the locks um or the the lock picks and engaging those um with the with the okay. vault so so, so the so, i'm getting uh, a, a uh, hello okay now so, it's good weird um so I think what uh, your plan was then, you're not trying to get the vault out. You're just trying to hack the vault right here now, get your samples, and then peace out. Is that right? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. If that's acceptable to the uh, success of the mission. Yeah, whatever you guys want. I yeah. think it could be uh, getting the entire vault out, or it could just be hacking it and getting the stuff. Also, it seems like this might devolve into all the guards being dead soon so we'll see <laughs> so yeah we'll we see you getting to the to the vault and like maybe rummaging in a pocket or something like that for your crypto lock picks right and then the camera cuts to the steve who is gonna execute people we'll see how he rolls <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Well, I don't know um, if I just dropped the ones that I had my gun same dead. Yeah, uh, I don't I don't see how they that would be a roll. Like I don't they're not like they don't have wired reflexes or anything and the guns are in their faces. <laughs> so I yeah. think they just pretty much drop if I that's think, what you want to do. Yeah, and I think what I actually do as a follow up to that is um and, and this could easily be a role to see how this goes is actually like securing the area afterwards, right? And, um, uh, or like turning towards any of the leftover guards um, to get into the firefight with them. And um, yeah. Yeah, like you guys know that um, there is more guards in this place. It was just the four that came to the front to handle the exchange. Yeah. Um, so this is basically me maybe, um, uh, grabbing um, whatever, this is a warehouse, right? Uh, some kind of rack of something, pulling that over to, to create a cover. Um, so where, where I, I assume they are coming from, I'm going to set up um, something that will cover um, uh, Yeji's retreat and our continued kind of uh, siege of this warehouse. Right. OK. So hmm. Um, I'm sure there's a bunch of bunch of different things in the warehouse that you could use for that. What do you think? Just like some, maybe even just kick out the legs of one of the stands of the crates or something so that they fall down in front of you or something, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And actually, like, I really like, yeah, I'm going for, um, let's make this for as chaotic as possible for the opposition. <laughs> okay. So maybe I even, like, uh, see... Um, um, uh, uh, look along the rows of of whatever shelving there is, right? And I, I pick out like one or two weak points that I see in the structure of that, and like take a couple of shots at them. So maybe like one of our flanks is like completely um, messed up, and I want to use uh, obviously wreck uh, to achieve a good cover for us. Right, that seems legit. So we'll roll it up. Uh, 
what position are we in here? Hmm. I think it's risky because there is a guard with a gun that's shooting at your colleague who could just swivel the gun easily to shoot at you instead. <laughs> it's yeah, risky okay. with uh, this is your thing, right? Like getting weak points and shooting and yeah, I'll, I'll give you great effect on it if you pull it off. Okay. And are you pushing yourself? Is anybody helping? Is, uh, yeah, what about those things? I mean, whoever is uh, also in this firefight might be helping me by yes. keeping that guard busy. I mean, Can I could try to take me? a pot shot of that. Uh, Just like a suppressing shot or something like that? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, let's do that then. So you get an extra so do D. I take, do I take you, stress on that? One? You take one stress because when you're helping, it's, it's half as hard. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, no, so let's see how this goes. That's one bonus die. Mini crit. <laughs> yeah, mini crit, exactly. <laughs> yeah, cool. So let's see. Risky complication, reduced effect. Desperate. You end up in a desperate situation. I like that. <laughs> so you Makes do it. Sense. You do it. Um, ooh, yeah, I know what happens. So what ends up happening is you you take out the joints and the structures and stuff, right? So these yeah. things are falling and um, all that kind of stuff. And I think when it starts falling, somebody Metal Gear Solid hits the alarm, right? <laughs> um, there's a couple gunshots and then there's a couple more gunshots. Things starts falling, things devolve into a chaotic mess. But um, yeah, there's like the red amber glowing and a probably like since it's the future, a subsonic signal goes out or something like that, right? Like an annoying cat sound or something like that. <laughs> like high high pitched uh, variable thing in your in your ears, and uh, you know that the guards are going to be on their way, and ostensibly more guards. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm fine with that. I'm just going to take this as a consequence. I don't want to resist. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> And then uh, why don't we pan back up to the lens sniping? Yeah. All right. So, uh, I mean, I think I'm just going to probably try to take out another one. The guy that's shooting um, at here. Or can I, I mean, I don't suppose there's a, there's a clear way to like deactivate the alarm. Is there with a, hmm. with a bullet? You know, is there an alarm box? Yeah, we can say that. Like, why don't why don't you have like a flashback or something? Because the thing is, is that yeah. one of the so, characters but the, then it would be a protect, right? Because oh, yeah, it true. doesn't really matter anymore if you take the alarm out now. Mm -hmm. Like the alarm has been sounded. Sure. What do yeah. we achieve with that, right? That's true. Yeah, that's a good point. Good I think question. that mechanically it would be a protect. So what that means is when you face danger for a teammate, step in to suffer a consequence in their place. You may roll to resist as normal if you wish. Okay. So it would yeah. be you taking on the resistance role instead of for the me, Steve. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm done with that. Yeah. Um, okay. So what would that be? Resolve? Um. Let's see. I think it would probably be insight because you're tracing it again, right? Sure. Yeah. Um, and then we can have like a flashback to when Gerberish had um, basically scouted out this place. We can just have like a round table thing to like, we, we see Gerberish's thumb or forefinger or something pointing to like the alarm box or whatever, right? And then we see your lens like slowly swivel to this box as well. Too stress. Yeah. That's not too bad. So it's so. Tell me what it uh, looks like. So um, <clears throat> yeah, I think we uh, we get a shot of this, you know, this firefight, and then we we see um, uh, we see Yeji, um, you know, doing the whole hacking thing, and then 
sort of get a wide shot of both of these going on at the same time. And then on the wall is just this, you know, siren blaring and, uh, you know, the, the red light that's flashing. And then uh, there's just a spark as a loud noise. It's a bullet comes through and then it just, you know, blows up. Nice. Yeah, I think uh, we get the... It, to make it even more chaotic and fun, maybe the uh, the lights turn off and then it goes to flood lighting, right? Like with yeah. the, the dim amber action going on. I like that. And then what is Syria doing? You just got shot, kind of. <laughs> you got grazed. <laughs> I got shot. Um, so you got shot, the alarm's going off. Um, uh, well, not anymore. Not anymore. The alarm is here. Yeah. Lom's been disengaged, um, and uh, Jackson's got the safe, basically. Yeah, but that guy's still there shooting at you. Right, that guy's still shooting. Um, how far away is that? that guy? Mm, maybe 15 paces, 10, 15 paces from me. Okay. Um, is it... Uh, Is it close enough that I can like run up on him or uh it would be probably desperate to run yeah, up yeah. on a guy with a gun shooting at you. Yeah, that's desperate. Yeah, but here's the trick. If you roll a desperate action you get XP. It's true. <laughs> this is true. Um It's also like you could die, right? So <laughs> just to put not. it out there. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, true. I mean, you already used your armor, right? So that yeah, yeah I already I mean, used my armor. Die, die. You would trauma out, but yeah, <laughs> it's, um, it's, well, assuming you would anyway. <laughs> right, right. Um, I think uh, what uh, interesting, uh, but we just basically have to get out now. Is the ideal thing, right? Well, uh, you need to get enough time to get the the safe hacked, right, and okay. provide some cover for AG probably. And even if you tried to like burn rubber out of there now, I think the, they're pretty mobilized, right? They're, they they come in. So um, uh, I was thinking uh, it might be interesting to use my proprietary tech for the fun of it. Um, yes. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, and like through like like to suddenly have like massive like wind come in with with billowing f heavy like and it just like it just like the whole warehouse gets like cold and f and and fog builds up so basically it gives us massive like gives us cover to like do everything we need and get get the hell out okay i think if you did that it might hinder you guys shooting at them as well though true true um um <laughs> I like Matthias is just like yes, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I mean, it's like we want to get out like under. I mean, there's more guards coming. It's just like uh, at a certain point, it's it, we have few people against a lot of people. I was just thinking about like making it so like you know we just try to get out stealthily as possible with all that. Sure, yeah, I, I like it. Okay. okay. So let's look at your move here. You're going to push yourself to do this, which means you also get the benefits of uh, pushing yourself. Mm -hmm. um, do, 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 do. Uh, create or summon an active god in your immediate vicinity. Heavy fog, chilling and stuff. So yeah, okay. Yeah. So what... Let's see. You're still being... I think it's still going to be risky because you're getting shot at, though. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm, right. I, I'm I'm trying to like kind of like dodge behind like a crate and like to like set up my gear basically to okay. make this happen. Okay. Ideally. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll we'll call it risky. It'll be okay. standard effect. The risk is. The guy shoots you before you get to be doing this, or if totally. you do it, it will compromise and do an in between thing. And uh, so, are you 
how what, like what does it look like for you to to summon this um so uh Uh, so it looks like, um, uh, I, I basically like, um, break out like a small pack with lots of these, like, uh, with, with, with like the three, they're like three little drones and, uh, the, I drop them out and they, as soon as I like pop them out and like turn them on, they, fly off really fast and they unpack smaller drones which unpack smaller drones mm. and and start like and basically like uh f- fly out and start like and they're like they have like have basically kind of like this like small nanites that start manipulating the environment cool yeah i, I like that especially like uh you're right by the docks anyway so it'd be pretty easy i think to generate some fog <laughs> yeah exactly yeah so the, it basically you just like see these like small like ufo looking drones like pop up and they just start like spitting out like smaller ones that spit out smaller ones that like it's like this little little tiny aircraft carrier of nanite drones basically cool okay so roll it up it's a risky standard and are you do you think that's uh, controlling yeah, it's controlling technology I know how to use, so that makes sense yeah. to me. Yeah. All right. And are you pushing Let's... yourself or I mean I did push myself to do this already. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah. So you yeah. make sure that you give yourself either increased effects or the benefits of a plus one D as well. Um Arr. I'm just like, do I go for the additional die because I'm rolling terrible? But you know, that's just random, anyways. Or go for the great effect. Uh, uh, I'm gonna go for the additional die. Let's do that. So sure. Uh, so it's risky. Risky standard plus one d. Standard. You're due for a six, right? There you yes. go. See, there you go. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's totally how dice work. You're dude for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Law of probabilities. Like, it's no, super thing. important that, to take that extra die, though. Yeah, yeah I, that last one was a six, so there you go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it happens exactly like you think. So the is it kind of like a funnel effect? Like, do does one of them come near like the like the end of it get to the water, and then they just sort of like drum up this phone like uh, yeah this yeah, fog, totally, and then they funnel it in yeah you, you totally see this like kind of like kind of like they, they the nanites like they spread out outside the docks and then you just see yeah it's almost like little mini tornadoes like whirlwinds like pulling up this like dense fog and you feel this chill in the air and just like this fog just billows into the warehouse uh, obstructing view sweet I love it. And we, we hear like all this shouting and, you know, general shouts of confusion, like the, the, uh, um, the allegory of the Wilhelm scream for confusion. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> right exactly. and, yeah. Sweet. Um, it's been a little bit. So do you guys want to take five before we jump back into the scenes? Sure. Yeah. Let's come back at 25. Does okay. that sound good? Okay. See you next
<laughs> I like that we have a view of of Colin not being there. <laughs> <laughs> At least we'll know. Tyler, was it you that was saying this was your first gauntlet game? Yes. Cool. Well, welcome. <laughs> yeah, welcome. welcome. Did you just um like are you a new patron or Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. Just, How did uh, you hear about Gauntlet? Um, I think uh I think it was uh like a recommended podcast. Oh the Gauntlet podcast, yeah. Cool. Like from one of your friends or no, no, just on iTunes. Oh, really? Cool. Yeah. yeah. Which one? <laughs> We've got like eight podcasts. It was uh, <laughs> it's the the just the Gauntlet podcast. The main one. Yeah. Cool. The main. One. Yeah. Although I've been listening to the uh, the Mercy Falls eighty three. Oh yeah. Pocket size play. And I love the I love the music for that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like so much cognitive dissonance. Like yeah. Robbie gets stabbed in the face. Do 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed so hard when I put that together. My brother was like, I don't know, this feels kind of weird. And I'm like, that's the point. <laughs> it is weird. Great. That's why it's so good. <laughs> cool. Okay, so. I feel like where we're at in this is do you what do people think about abstracting the combat a little bit more now to like we we still need Yeji to get the stuff and then get out and then are you guys more concerned with like I want to kill all these guards or should we abstract it to like a group action of suppressing them so Yeji can do her thing yeah buying time Right. Yeah. That's cool. buying time and uh, cover, like keeping keeping an escape vector open, is like yeah. giving Yeji enough time and keeping escape vector open, and that's right. that's I think our goal here. Cool. And then Jackson Jewel, um, how happy are you with uh, the fiction so far? Are you happy to be up there supporting and stuff, or would you rather be doing other stuff? Or um, I'm I'm content here. Um, okay. Because yeah. I was thinking, what well, if you if you want to be doing that, you might want to change your special ability to systemic relocation because you I could was really thinking about that. Yeah, because yeah, you could really fuck people up with that. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, that's was, when you uh, use a long range weapon from cover, you can wreck something or someone as though you were yeah. tracing them and you have potency. So that's where like you shoot through the wall and headshot them type thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um yeah, I think I will do that. I was I was considering that and yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that makes, sense. that makes sense. Um and I think with your fine scope from what I recall of writing it, it provides you some multi spectrum. So I think you won't have a problem uh, shooting the people with your scope because you've got uh, multiple wavelengths of light to, in which to target people. I think that's a different one. That's the is that the multi spectrum contacts? Um, I can't remember if I put it in the scope or not. Is the scope purely just magnification? Um, here, let me check. Uh, let me see. Highly accurate telescopic site that allows for long distance vision oh, okay yeah. cool so but yeah i got load to burn so mm. um i'll uh i'll also have the multi-spectrum contacts cool <laughs> that sounds good um cool so is that what you want to be doing just using your your weapon to just like blow through the wall to tap these guys out or what yeah 
Yeah, yeah, I think so. Cool. So, is the point of the action you're about to do to simply take them out, or is it to, like, do more than that, like, instill fear in them, uh, suppress them, especially? Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's more one of those. I uh, I have confidence in the people on the ground that they can uh, they can do the bulk of the firefight. I think uh, I would like to um, capitalize on on my distance by uh, by um, I think instilling fear is a good one. You know, throwing them off. You know, making yeah. making things seem bigger than they they actually are. Right. They're like, oh, shit, we only thought it was four people, but maybe now there's like 12 or something. Who knows, right? Exactly. Yeah. And then like the guy who's saying that that's the one that you pop his head off or whatever, right? <laughs> the exactly. guy beside him is like, oh, shit. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So sounds like you're still tracing, probably. Do you think? Yeah. So? Yeah. 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 I think you're uh, in a... Or wrecking. Hmm? Or wrecking, yeah. Or Which wrecking. is one or the other. Yeah, so for systemic relocation, it's essentially when you wreck, you roll your trace for it. Mm -hmm. That's the right. good thing about it, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. you can go ahead, roll your trace. I think it'll be a controlled position. Mm -hmm. There's fog. Nobody's shooting at you. I think you'll have great effect. Great effect, okay. Yeah, especially with your move, because you have potency. Sure. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you can push yourself for a die or extreme effect, I guess. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I'm going to add a bonus die. Sounds good. Four, cool. So you're in a controlled position. Reduced effect. Harm is off the table, I think. End up in a risky position. Ooh, yeah, I like this. Okay, so I think uh, just like we described, you're you're putting the fear of God in them, and the guy who's like, I think literally a guy turns to one of the other ones who are um, probably using some of the cover from uh, the Steve's dropped crates from y'all, <laughs> uh, and he turns to like his comrade. Um, uh, and I think he turns to her and is like, uh, who knows how, I thought there was just four people. And she's like, I thought so too. And then his head explodes, right? <laughs> He's just like, plug, gone. And so I think with that though, we see her pick up a long rifle and we get that scene where through your scope, you see like the red dot on you as well. And um, since it's controlled, I'll just say that you end up in a risky position and you know what it is. Like, she she gonna get you, maybe. <laughs> Does that sound fair? Unless you want to resist it, of course. No, that sounds, that sounds fair. Sounds good. Okay, so this there's a bead on your sniper. Um, somebody still hasn't dealt with that guy shooting at, uh, <laughs> at Syria. <laughs> Um, let's go back to Yeji, though. So you're trying to hack this thing? Uh, Yeji has had a long and storied career as a criminal assassin, but not as a hacker. Um, so <laughs> I think I'm going to invoke a flashback to Gabraish, um, kind of, like, walking her through the motions, because she can certainly, like physically reproduce, um, memorize and reproduce whatever was commanded. Cool. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. yeah, I like that. Cool. Yeah, I like that. So what action do you so think what that action is? do you think that is? Um that's good. Maybe does it count as a consort? And that like she's just getting like advice from a hacker. Um, I could even pull in my friend Elif, who's an ex cryptographer. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, so maybe she's just kind of like working with the two of them to kind of figure out like what types of locks would be on this thing, what would they look like, and then in those scenarios, what would be the way to like move through this? 
Sure. I'll charge you one stress for that flashback, okay. and then you can make the roll. All right. We get like, GG, where are we at? Where are we at? Right. Um, yeah. Uh, what is the position on this? Uh, it's risky. Uh, no, it's definitely risky because there's still the guards. Um, they would enough. definitely have been desperate without the fog, I think. Because <laughs> okay. there's quite a few people. I believe when they scouted, I think I said it was 12 people, and you've taken out through two. There's still the guy without the gun and the guy with the gun. Okay. And then the people behind. So I think it's still risky. Um, because if I were to screw this up, like I'm going to draw attention essentially, right? Yeah. And I think great effect if you're consorting with an ex cryptographer yeah. and, and a haunt. <laughs> 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 and are you pushing yourself? And is somebody um, assisting? I feel like I should push myself here because this is what everything hinges on is me completing this role. Yeah. Uh, sounds good. <laughs> Do you have any moves that would help you in this situation either? Like your special abilities? Um, I mean, I do have on the wrist, which would be not affected by quality or tier when you bypass security measures. Damn. Okay. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I might... I might give you extreme effect then. And you're using fine crypto lock picks as well, right? I am. Yeah. So I will say, yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, you, you pretty much got this, I think. Okay. I mean, we so, probably need it against the tier we're going up against too. Yep. Right? So, but, well, but it, that's, that's what I mean. His his move bypasses quality and tier. Ah. So he's nice. doing, he's, Yeji is, has got this. <laughs> <laughs> So how many bonus dice should I be adding to this? Um, you're pushing yourself, right? So you're getting one bonus die. And you'll have extreme effect, okay. but in a risky position. Got it. Ooh. <laughs> cool. So let's see. What will be the complication? Oh, how much stress do you have again? I'm pretty low on stress, actually. Okay, I'm going to be really mean then. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I think you you take this off and uh, like the crypto, crypto lock picks, what do you think they look like? Is it just like a USB thing, an interface or whatever? I think that they're kind of like, I think they almost look like traditional lockpicks in a way. So like these long, and this is not what a traditional lockpick looks like at all. <laughs> just in my imagination. Um, just these are kind of like long, thin, like pointy, like metal pins essentially. But I think that like the, the tip of that is maybe like you see some type of like circuitry and like um, different, uh, like actual electronic connectors and things like that um, kind of like seamlessly tucked in there. So it's kind of like an, yeah, like a cybernetic version of a uh, uh, analog lockpick. Right. OK. So I think what happens is um, there is like a, a random guard who's shooting at you. And they don't actually strike you, but it hits the, uh, the lockpick, actually. Oh, OK. And um, it's not completely destroyed. What I'm doing is putting you in a, a desperate position. The lockpick is a little bit damaged, so it's like it went from um, like if you see the, the the progress bar or the the like hacking to get the numbers where they keep spinning, and then it's like oh yes, this number's a two, this number's a three, that kind of thing. It's going through that, and then it gets blasted, and then it's like slowly going, and you're not sure like how well it's working much anymore, and uh, I think you even like let out a like a little bit of a yelp, so the guy or girl who's shooting at you knows where you are as well. Okay. 
Well, let's even like push that because I was thinking about this in like, let's say that like I just like hack up a lung essentially. And like, so like I start coughing from this disease and like there's kind of like, yeah, like it almost looks like kind of like orange cottage cheese um, that she coughs up into like one of these scarves. And same thing is back in the garden. So she kind of like, as she's trying to do all of this, um, she like grabs that scarf and like tucks it um, behind in a pocket. Um, and yeah, so basically okay. the same thing though, like she's coughing and like that is like um, attracting this attention. Okay, it sounds like you're not resisting the consequences. <laughs> sounds good. Could I be? Uh, <laughs> but I think, well, maybe that is, let's frame it this way, I will resist it. Uh, Okay. We'll frame it this way is that like she kind of like feels that like bile or whatever it is like kind of like building up and like as she's kind of getting like stressed out by this and all of that kind of thing um so like coughing it up in a way is like kind of like releasing like that like anxiety and just that kind of like physical like um detriment um well so uh, or is this like <laughs> you know what we're doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah are you resisting the consequence of the the lockpicks being shot or oh, yeah. yeah knowing your position of the i would say of the lockpicks being shot okay and you're doing that by drawing more attention to yourself um yeah or... i think that, that is kind of like the unintended i think like oh um i'm trying to tie two things together that don't necessarily need to be tied together <laughs> uh, <laughs> is exactly what's happening um, I think I think um, what what she's doing is your sickness is coming through. You're coughing up in the middle of it, and that's what saves the lock picks. But that's also what's stressing you out if you roll bad on the resist. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that that would be a good thing for pictorial positioning on the resistance roll for sure. Yeah. Uh, so, what are we thinking for that resistance roll then? Hmm. What is luck? <laughs> um, no, finesse. I guess we'll go with... We'll go with the prowess, because that's the closest to a physical thing. OK. And then, yeah, if you... If you get a lot of stress, then y'all coughing up your gross stuff. <laughs> Watch you like clear a stress, and you're like, "Oh, this is actually fine." Yeah, fine. <laughs> um, prowess is going to be ghost. Uh, you'll hit prowess actually. The button oh, prowess. Where's the button prowess? It should be on your character sheet above the finesse. Oh, just the whole category. I see. Yeah, that category you'll got be it. hitting. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. Just straight roll on this. Oh, four stress. All right. So it is pretty stressful, it turns out. <laughs> yeah, and I think that that combination of like struggling with the disease as well as like being thrown off and like she had to memorize like how to like move these picks and that kind of thing. And now she's has to improvise a little bit as well as she hates having attention on her. So I think it's like this like really good yeah conflation of like everything that yeji hates right okay and i think so Ooh, maybe even like what happens then is uh you you do this like horrible coughing fit thing and you like sort of fall back with the the uh vault and it shifts it a little bit so that when it was about to get hit it like pings off of the vault instead of hitting your lock picks, right? Because you've shifted it just like a little bit with your coughing fit. So we even see that it is just like a lucky thing. <laughs> and then meanwhile, what about the Steve and Syria? Are you guys going to engage these um these guards on either side? There's the one without a gun and there's the one shooting at Syria, right? It might be a good opportunity to do a, a setup or a, a group thing. Yeah, um, I do think this is like a team action of some kind. If oh. we're if our goal is uh, keep them suppressed, right? Like let's keep the firefight going by the time and not let them move into 
flanking us, surrounding us, that kind of thing. Like we're not aiming to take them down. We're aiming to uh, keep them at bay for the time being. Oh, okay. Well, I, I thought it was going to, like, I think uh, the person doing a good amount of job of suppressing them in the back is your lens, right? And then in, in the immediate vicinity, oh. you have that dude, like, actually shooting at Syria right now and that other guard, right? Yeah, then let's let's uh, take take them out um, until Yeji gets, gets the job done on, on, on her way back. But uh, we'll yeah. see how that goes, yeah. No. Um, yeah. So um, I think I think we 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 cut to um, uh, the Steve um, like kind of uh, sitting behind some cover um, and and hearing him complain to Yeji like what's going on, not getting any updates <laughs> <laughs> on that stuff, right? Um, and then uh, you just hear. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and uh, then, uh, but then I pop out again to uh, actually take a shot at um, at the one that's probably been going for Syria. Um, yeah, for for Syria. Sure. And are you take... are you setting up Syria, or are you just is it a group thing? Like, a, I could see it being both of you pop out to take out both the remaining people, right? Yeah, let's make this a team action. Mm -hmm. You're muted, Syria. Oh yeah, I can't hear you. There you go. Okay, I accidentally hit me. Okay, so yeah, so if you set up like some sort of yeah, the, if you do like suppressing fire, or draw his attention, then I can run up basically. <laughs> you really want to blade this guy, hey? <laughs> I, I I I picked my fine water water knife. I like blading with my father. I've okay. like I I have skirmish. I don't have um I don't have uh. Uh, or okay. whatever it is. Okay. I have combat, not trade. Yeah. Then, so. then I know what I'm doing. Then, then this is actually um, um, uh, uh, the Steve uh, standing up, and because I have two guns, right? I, um, I go completely batshit and and start yelling, ah! <laughs> walking backwards to draw like both of their intention to open them up. Uh, that that Syria. Like this is a setup action then for Syria to, I don't know how you're going to do it. Run past them, blade them both, or something like that. Right? Yeah, basically run up under your suppressing fire and the cover of the fog to basically yeah. try to take them out. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, I think it's a risky thing that you're doing just from the guy with the gun, the one without a gun, is gonna like draw the a baton and go for people but it's not really a match for somebody with a gun <laughs> and yeah. uh, i think it will be i think when, i have to tell you the attribute i'm using right yeah um i think this is actually control oh okay i thought it was going to be a combat it's intimidating okay. i mean I could see control for sure. Yeah, I could see where you're coming from. Yeah, it, it's more like uh, it's like um, I'm trying to get their attention and and s seem like the the uh, yeah you're manipulating yeah, them, the right? Crazy gun gunner there, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be the same thing. We'll we'll do risky standard. Um, yeah, I think that is fair and enough. Uh, for the Are you pushing? Um, no. Okay. Does anybody have a, a ripple slash devil's bargain to offer? <laughs> um, hey, he runs out of bullets. That's Ooh. an easy one. I like that. <laughs> yeah. All or nothing, the Steve? All or nothing? Yep. <laughs> Definitely all or nothing. Yeah, cool. um, like I'm emptying uh, the clips. Right. Uh, so, yeah. So one bonus die. Let's see how this goes. Not That's a bad. five. Risky. So I do it, but I suffer some kind of consequence. Yes. Obviously, probably them shooting back. Yeah.
Oh yeah. I like making it higher stakes. So let's say that uh, you do this thing uh, and it works too well. The guy that um, will deal with the, I like opening up the, the guy who shot uh, Syria for Syria to deal with just thematically. So maybe mm -hmm. the guy with the baton, actually he's like a little bit more quicker than you thought. And as you're like spraying the bullets, you go from that guy and it like doesn't quite hit him. You go to the guy with the gun and you're suppressing them. And then when you turn, that guy's like right on you. He's like about to. Yeah. And, and, like, and right then is when you go click, 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 click. And there's no bullets left. Yeah. Like he's <laughs> about to be like, Whoa! and then that's when we cut to Syria doing the action. Great. So it's a setup action. So you I choose. Mean, wait, what? I can, I can resist that, right? I guess so. <laughs> um, See, Matthias is one that I have to like trick, basically. <laughs> Just like, yeah, it's over. <laughs> new play new players, I'm like, you can resist it, but other ones I'm just like, what what? I'm resisting. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he's he he's got that baton, right? Yeah. And um, um... I think I'm going click, 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 and he's coming at me. And I, um, the way I resist this um, is I. Uh, oh no! Let's. I'll take it. I take it for now. That's it's okay. fine. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's you end going. up in a desperate position, right? Yep. Cool. That's okay, cool. Syria. So. You're, you've got a setup here. Uh -huh. You're definitely, I mean, the Steve is being more of a distraction than he would like, maybe. So, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, so, yeah. thanks to Steve. So, uh, with the setup action, you can get plus one effect or improved effect uh, position. And I think, like I was saying before, it would be somewhat desperate to run at this guy with a gun. <laughs> uh, but that is no longer the. Uh, case if you choose for it to be upgraded to a risky position instead. Yeah, I'll upgrade it to to risky. Um, cool. And so your aim is to take out both these guys with the the water knife, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And yeah. so, what action do you think that is? A skirmish, probably. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. So risky. Yeah. Uh, you have a fine water knife, yeah. Correct. And. So you'll have standard effect. And you can push yourself for even greater effect or plus one D. Yeah, that's too stress though, right? It is too stress. Which would max up my stress. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> uh is there a uh uh devil's bargain that you can throw at me? Hmm. The ones that I have already is Yeji has been seen because they forgot to put on her helmet. <laughs> and what are the other ones? A future implication that would be fun with these people. I mean, yeah, does anybody else have a fun ripple to offer? Uh, could just be that she gets separated. Potentially. Mm -hmm. Like there's no easy way I know where I need to go or isolated or something like that. Oh yeah. How about how about just as the way this skirmish plays out, no matter what happens, you get lost in the fog. I like that a lot. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh all right. So and that gives me plus one, which is great, because I only get one die in that. So, uh... uh, yeah. If you this is the the first session too, so I don't mind if people rearrange their action ratings for what they want um, right. their character to be like. So, especially if you're a pirate, you might. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll drop at... the one. I'll, <laughs> I'll 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 do. So I'll make it. Uh, let's cancel and let's reroll that. All right. So I upped it. All right. So I have two in that. Uh, and let's do two. And it's risky. Okay. 
and standard effect and plus one die and cement. All right, I got a five. All right. So, hmm. Yeah, I think you uh, you can enact your <laughs> revenge on the one with the the weapon mm -hmm. or with the the actual gun. Mm -hmm. um, but when you get to the one with the baton heading at Steve, mm -hmm. they shift like um, you don't think that they see you coming, right? right? They're about to come down on the Steve and out of the peripheral, they see you and they swing their body in just such a way that the baton comes cracking down on you instead of the Steve. Great. And uh, you take two harm. Great. Uh, I'm just going to take that harm. And then wherever you, I think you do the, uh, the matrix fall, right? Where you do the like spin <laughs> and yeah. hit the ground. And yeah. you know that when you pop back up because of the ripple, you'll be, yeah. you know, so he, he spins you. around and it clocks me in the side of the head and like see me drop. And like, I, like when I, when I look back up, so slightly dazed, you know, there's blood running down the side of my head and, and you know, mm -hmm. I'll be. You separated. can you can narrate how you take out the person who shot you though if you like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So there, you, you see them uh, like as they're because their other buddy is like running forward. That they kind of stop and they're like aiming um, uh, right at the Steve, and it looks like they're like aiming. They're just right about to take the shot, and um, I just like out of the fog you just like i just kind of like step up right in front of their face and they just like look at the shock of surprise they weren't even looking my direction and i just got the i just like got them uh directly uh in this in the stomach with the this long weird nanotech blade of the uh and uh they just like have this look of surprise and shock and then drop and that's Ooh. when i like turn and start running towards the um you know, hoping that the fog covers my, you know, but it doesn't. And then they clock me in the head and I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so it goes, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cool. So uh, back up on the rooftop, what were you hoping to do, our lens? Um, <clears throat> so uh, I think at this point I might start heading toward the the warehouse i think my work seems to be pretty much done here right um so i think i am changing position okay mm, i think you can just do that i don't think that's a, a role are you okay. hoping to get something mechanically uh from this um so i think uh i mean i think i'm just trying to sort of regroup with everyone now that uh, the the long range thing isn't super helpful anymore. Okay. And um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think I pull out my my finely crafted handgun, but beyond that, I think I'm just waiting to see what what happens next. Okay. If you're, are you shooting as you go, like running and gunning, to keep suppressing them and stuff? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay, well, why don't we make the action to see if you actually nail anybody in the fog then? Sure, sounds good. Sounds good. Do you think you're still what tracing? I... Um, I think so. Yeah, I. Uh, not sure what else would it be. Could be controlling similar thing to the Steve when they were like sure. he was trying to get them into specific positions, but if you're just yeah. taking shots to suppress them, it could just be tracing, right? Yeah, I think it's just that then. Cool. Yeah, why don't you roll that? I think it'll be controlled. I think you're still too far out that they would be aiming specifically at you, especially since they're targeting AG now. At least sure. one or two of them. <laughs> Um, controlled standard. Standard. All right. Sounds good. Five. 
let's see you do it. So there's mollified reduced effect. Hmm. Let's say that, hmm, yeah, I think um, what, what ends up happening is uh, the sniper who had a bead on you when you were shifting your like crow's nest position or whatever, right? They end up just clipping you a little bit, like one harm and you, there's, it's sort of like a, a like cat and mouse game that they're playing with you. Like you could tell that maybe they had a better line on you and they're just like kind of wanting to fuck with you a little bit as you're running up to the line. Are you running like yeah. right into the warehouse or what's the plan? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm just okay. Straight for the warehouse. Okay, cool. So I think you take like a, a sh shot that grazes your arm or something. Okay. And yeah. And it's basically the sniper being like, I could have killed you. And uh, yeah, she, she's the one that you could you could surmise that she would be pissed because you shot the person in the head beside her. <laughs> That's sure. fair. Yeah. Cool. Where's uh, where's my harm? Right here. Oh, uh, it should be on the left hand oh. side. Yeah. All right. I got it. Yeah. Um, but you also do the thing, so they are suppressed a little bit more. The people that were shooting at Yeji, um, have to like duck a little bit, right? As the bullets careen into the warehouse. So Yeji, I think you're in a risky position instead of desperate. For if you're doing the same thing anyway, with your action. Are you still just trying to get it open? Yeah. Cool. So let's do the same thing. It'll be, okay. yeah, you still have the same, uh, It'll be risky and a, uh, I guess it would be technically extreme still. Okay. It's not a flashback anymore too though. So it could be like a modify roll or a hack or something. Um, well, so that's the tricky thing is that I will need, I need to push myself to get a hack. Um, oh, okay. Well, mm, let's see. Near the fuse. That could be a finesse for sure, too, right? I mean, that is another thing that I will have to do. But you have a finesse. No. Unless. You should have two in ghosts and one in finesse for just from starting. Oh, just from starting? Yeah. Did I not start correctly then? Maybe. I have 1.2 skirmish. Because I thought we could do that. Yeah, you're yeah. you're lacking in points in general. Are you? You I didn't have, assign have, them all. You should have seven from the start off. Seven. Oh, man. Well, I mean, I've been fairly successful, so. Uh, it yeah. So you start with three, and then you assign four. Oh right, right. Okay. Okay. So I have one more somewhere that I can throw at some point. I'll leave. Yeah. That. Cool. So how many do you have, UG? Oh God! Now I gotta do math. Um, okay, so we had, the, I had one from the, the deadly move that we had taken for the class, and then yeah. consort was a, um, cybernetics, and so that would mean, and then I got one, I put one into survey off of my insight XP, which tipped last time. Oh, so you should have... You should have two more then, if you've okay. Or you put a rating in something, and you should start with finesse. Yeah. So, you, so could have, you could have another one in whatever you like. Actually, two more, right? Because you leveled up once, and we get one from the crew advance. Oh, you got one, one from the crew took, advance. So it should be nine altogether for you. Oh, and. Everybody can take the benefits of the crew advance then too. Oh, uh, which one is that? What is that? Which one did you take again? It so, was deadly. Yeah, deadly. we took deadly. It gives you um, plus one in hunt, prowl, or skirmish. 
So yeah. Trace, Ghost, or, or Combat. Uh, um, so maybe it does make... Like, I don't see her as a hacker, but maybe it does make sense. Well, OK. So I'm taking two more. So I'm going to do one in finesse and one in no not hack survey. OK. So you'll have nine now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes. Cool. OK. <laughs> and so what do you think this action is? <laughs> uh, finesse is wonderful. Yeah, I um, think I think that makes sense because you're trying to do something like ostensibly delicate in the face of danger and stuff, right? So yeah, and I think it's it's definitely like she's repeating, just trying to repeat actions that she learned essentially. So I think like finesse makes sense. From yeah, that perspective. totally. Yeah, so do uh, risky and great, which is extreme. Oh god. Well four. Four. Cool, cool. Let's see. So at least this time you did the thing. <laughs> <laughs> four. Complication. Reduce effect. Ooh, yeah, I know what happens. So it pops open and uh a bullet like ricochets and it's like a really hot uh, still just recently fired, of course, bullet. And it like singes the, it, it like we go into bullet time again and it scrapes across the uh, vault door as it's like opening. And it's so hot that it like burns in and fuses where the um, crypto lock keys are. Hmm. So you can't get them out. Like they're, they're just oh, like fused they're right into okay. the door. And so it's kind of like a fingerprint of Yeji because they're like, they're, they're specific things only you have, basically, uh, that can be traced back to you. And then also uh, you lose the item. You'd have to like get another one later or whatever, make one or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Unless you'd like to resist it, like, but it sounds pretty cool, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty cool, and I think she just wants to get out of here at this point. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And you have, uh, otherwise, you have extreme effect. So, <laughs> I think you can get at the stuff, which I think will say that you just have like a satchel or something like that that has no load, right? Like something that you have brought with you to sub sh shove some of the stuff in it. I think there's quite a bit. I think it'd be like three duffel bags worth or something, but you don't need that much, right? Are you here to take all of it or? Um, I mean, I think we only had to get two of the injectors. Yeah, they said they just wanted a couple. Of yeah. course, having more might be your score for this as well though, right? Yeah, that we were also true. wanted some for ourselves. But I think Gagey, Gagey also uh, is concerned about the group wanting to produce screen. So That's I true. don't, I don't think she's going any deeper as far as the, the screen stuff is concerned than what has been asked. Um, okay. I don't mean to screw over the group in that way. Um, is there, <laughs> is there <laughs> yeah. anything that the coil would, uh, it would be known that the coil would want um, out of this, like that they would want or want destroyed? The coil? Uh, yeah. They're just like a group of dippers that hack information, so not really. Not really. That's too bad. Um, like, you could basically... You could flashback to set something up if you have a good idea, yeah, but... Sure. Right. But we still have to get out of here, though, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Know what your stress situation looks like. Um, can I... Can we, like, have the extreme kind of, like, meld into her, like... Being able to nab this stuff and like be on the move. Um, sure, oh, definitely. Yeah, that's where I was going with that. Okay. I just needed to know how much you were taking, right? Yeah. So, so I think she's taking, she is taking the bare minimum of the assignment. I think that is expressly being done because she doesn't want to like um, give the rest of the group anything to like continue down this um, plot of like producing. 
their like own. the the group that you're giving the stuff oh, no. to our own group our own group <laughs> okay that's funny sounds good um okay so you just take like two or three or whatever yeah and, like enough to complete the mission and then peace out yeah and i think like if it makes sense like she's got all of these scarves and so maybe she uses them as like a kind of like a bundle like a like a baby bundle kind of thing so kind of wraps them up and like just kind of like straps them around her body um, I think she's getting rid of the uniform as well um, and right. kind of has more of just kind of her stealthy, um, yeah, sneaky outfit on underneath that and so that she can kind of disappear in the fog and the darkness. Um, cool. Okay, so I think at this point the role to withdraw would come into play, okay. except, except that for our lens you're being targeted by a sniper. <laughs> so it's going to be a little bit riskier for you. And the other one, the Syria, is lost in the fog. And Ooh. I have a baton to, to deal with. Right. So, so, yeah, let's deal with the baton now then. What what do you do? The guy's coming in at you with the baton. Yeah, he, he's coming in at me. Um, um, Like, I'm dropping the guns because they're empty and staring, staggering backwards. Um, But we see the the cybernetic implant that I've got on my forehead. Right. That's starting to uh, light up. And I want to do a flashback here. And here's how I'm going to sell it to you for um, that. It should only be one stress and maybe a devil's bargain to get out of this too, or a ripple. Okay. Um, I think we see, we've already established um, uh, looking um, that we, we've got that workshop, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, um, uh, we've got that workshop, and we're, we, we've seen the Steve work at uh, this uh, microtech before. And we see him sitting at a workshop desk, like <laughs> looking very attentively at some kind of screen and some kind of um, very uh, fine tools going uh, onto his forehead and doing something that he's manipulating indirectly through some kind of instrumentation, right? Um, and I want to modify uh, my cybernetic implant here that I use. I, I took it for hacking. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of imagine it, it, it has like its own power source that is uh, that gets through my metabolism is fed by my metabolism, but I want to basically make it overload and do like one big flash to blind that guy. Okay. Um, uh, and here's the ripple that I'd like to ask for, in a uh -huh. sense, um, because it establishes something for the future. This is like a, in a score, typically like a one, like it takes its time to replenish. So I can't use it over and over again. Um, and if you don't think that's enough, maybe it's even like a one harm type of thing because one harm would reduce, uh, like, would reduce uh, effect on, like, I basically use it for hacking. So when I ever use this, then I have, like, limited effect on hacking stuff afterwards. Mm. I, I would think that in the flashback, this would be a modify role. Um, that's how I want to do it. Sure. Okay. I think that's fine. Um, let's see. For the ripple, what about it just being needed to be like repaired before you use it again? I think that would be fine, right? Like, I think this burns it out, and you can't use it again until you know you fix it or whatever in downtime. So that would temporarily temporarily remove my point in hacking, basically. Yeah. Until you fix uh, it. Yep. What? Uh, what's a f and fix is probably what. Just, just like costs. a. I think it's just a cost. Yeah. At most, it would be like a four clock long term project or something. But I think just cost would be fine for something like this. Yeah, like if some circuitry is burned out and I just have to pay for the replacement. Yeah. Um, if, and or something like that, or find a replacement. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds cool. Cool. So Let's how's do that. The, is one stress uh, cool uh, for the yeah yeah for sure yeah this is your your thing yeah uh, but I'm in a desperate position right 
Yes, that guy coming at you good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, standard the, effect. Yeah, and the goal is to like blind him, right? Yeah, like this, like to blind him. Like I don't, I imagine it is, it is uh, stronger than just a normal flash light going off. Um, like really, so he's like not really able to find me or is disorientated for a couple of moments, at least. Sure. All right, let's see how this goes. Bam, that's the six. six. There you go. Mark the XP as well. Yep. And so yeah, tell me, tell me what happens then. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, uh, uh, yeah, he's coming for me, and and he's like, um, I duck out of the way, and so he's then right in my face, and he goes for the next swing. Um, but him being right directly in my face, so it hits in full blast, right? And 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 he yells out and claws for his eyes. I don't know. Maybe I even did like some actual damage to to his retina, retinas, right? Um, and and staggers back. And I think I sink back. Like I've been walking backwards towards our truck, and and I kind of uh, sink down against the. The open hatch in the back of it, uh, trying to take stock where everybody is and if we're getting out of here soon or not. Yeah. Right. Okay. And so, how about um, Jackson? What is your plan to do with the sniper now that everybody is? Uh, I imagine people are like on the radio being like, okay, time to get out. Uh, right. Like, Yeji's finally actually been like, I got it. <laughs> yeah. So I, um, I mean, first I want to figure out where the sniper is. That's an important part. Um, so can I? Uh, can well, I, I think I think you know where they are because oh. you took a bullet from them, right? Like so that oh, kind of yeah. tells you where they're at. It gives a good general direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, then I would like to shoot them. Yeah, that sounds good. With yeah. the are you uh, whipping out the rifle again or? Yes. Yeah, cool. I think so. Um, so uh, I, I have a question, though. With the crew upgrade, can I bring my hunt up to, or my trace up to three? Yes. Or no? Yes, you okay. can. Yeah. Um, then, yes, that's what I'm going to do. Cool. Give it to me. Trace. Right. Uh, Risk yeah, Risky, because she's also trying to mess right. with you, right? The next shot isn't yeah. going to be uh, too good for you. <laughs> yeah. So risky standard. Um. Yeah, I think risky great. Okay. If you if you get her, I think she's not getting up again. <laughs> Are you pushing yourself? No. Oh. Dang, didn't need it. Okay. <laughs> so tell me what happens. Um, so I think, you know, I look through the, the scope, and I know the general direction of where she is, but uh, I think, you know, I see the, the classic little glint from the, uh, the other sniper scope. And, uh, you know, just intuitively... It, you know, my, my scope lines up and I pull the trigger and I just see the glint go away. And <laughs> I, I just sort of know, you know, I just yeah. sort of know what happened. No more glint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pop. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. And so, Syria, how do you try to navigate your way out? Like, you're all probably, like, stunned, you're bleeding, you're in the fog. Everyone's like, get out, get out, get out, right? Oh, you're muted. I was assuming, like, I'm, uh, like, I, I ha like, got hit and had a slight concussion, so I hear, like, I Ringing. a little yeah. dazed, and, like, I hear the get out, and, like, I in that kind of confusion of the concussion, I go the wrong way is my assumption. Um, and uh, I'm like trying to get out of the warehouse, but like, um, you know, uh, 
maybe like I'm trying to get out of the warehouse without being seen as much as possible, but you know, like maybe I, um, you know, don't head back towards the truck. Well, so, I think the role will decide if you head the right way or the wrong oh, way. Okay. We've got the fictional positioning to say that you're probably in a desperate position instead right. of risky because right. bullets are okay. flying. Uh, you're you've got a concussion and you're all like fucked up and stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. But how is it that you try to find the way to the truck and then we see if you do or not? <laughs> oh, okay, that's the that's the that's what we're looking for. Um, wow. Um, I um, that's a, let me think. Oh, hey, you know I've got I got an item. Um, uh, I am going to use. I'm going to throw on my. Um, Fine tier trail trail helmet. Cool. And and I'm using that to like I can like send I can, you know I drop the. You know it's it's not like a I'm gonna say it's not like a full helmet but you know it's like a strapped on thing with like a a visor that kind of drops over my eye and um, it's you know has like this headband with like weird like dot sensors all over the, the side of the headband and it drops over and I can see I can basically like see like the stream of fog coming in uh, from where it's coming in so I can kind of like route through that that's what I'm looking to do that sounds awesome what action do you think that is um uh maybe uh hopefully command because I'm controlling the uh, tech that I know how to use to tell me like tell me where to go or I mean it's not though it sounds more like a survey and I don't have that <laughs> but I can uh, try it it could be a trace as well trace is like tracking yeah, the path I don't, and I don't moving have, through I don't have that either okay so, <laughs> yeah. so I mean I can roll it um, uh, uh, um, I mean I so um, I don't see what was some other what, I could do maybe. Um, it could definitely be a ghost as well, like a, a prowling type yeah, thing. Yeah, I've got it. that. I've got that. So, so yeah, yeah we'll minus, I'm, I minus one die right now. So, yeah, we'll say that you're. Are you at minus one die? Yeah. Well. Well. Oh yeah, yeah. You took two harm, right? Okay. Yeah, I took it. I took a two harm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So. Um. Cool. So <laughs> interesting. Yeah. So you're in a desperate situation. It'll be standard effect getting back yeah. to the truck. I'll, I'll I'll shift my one point around and make it so I have two prowl, and okay. then uh, and then uh, I am so I'm rolling. So I'm trying to get back through all of this uh, stuff. Yeah. Okay. All right. And are you pushing yourself? If I do, I max out on my trauma. Oh which... right, right, right. Yeah, which would basically knock me out of the scene and whatnot. And Anyone anyways. have a good ripple, man? I'll just roll with it. Let's do it. Let's just go. Let's sure. See what we can do. If I fail, it makes things interesting. So is this is this a what positioning did you say? It'll desperate? be desperate standard. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought. Okay. And then. Uh, minus one die. And let's see what we go. What okay, so you do it. <laughs> yes. But in a but. desperate situation. Mark sure you make sure you mark your XP for desperate as well. Oh yeah. Um so you do it, but there's a consequence. You suffer severe harm. A serious complication occurs, or you have reduced effect. So you are standard, you could have limited not too interested in drawing this out too much longer, but I think which would be fun. And you can tell me if this is like outside of your, your comfort zone or not. But what I was thinking is it would be fun if the, um, we cut to the image of the bullet lodged in the gear and the bullet like pops out and the thing just like, um, is starting to come down and maybe, uh -huh. Since you, you do it, right, you get out of there. But right. what do you got? Oh, it leaves in. Well, it has to be a serious complication, actually. Oh, yeah. It cut, it 
um, you're you're like sort of hobbling out, right? You're all stunned and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. The, the great or not the great the the thing the covering starts going down, whatever it's called. I can't remember. And uh, it lands right on your belt, and to get out, you have to like basically take off your your belt, and your water knife goes out with it oh, on no. the on the other side. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, my favorite, <laughs> my, favorite my favorite water knife. I'm gonna have to hunt down another one of those. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, I, well. F- so to surmise the <laughs> summarize, sorry, the. Um, one of these guards, um, probably the blind guy, the way that it was lined up, because the other two died. Yeji. Yeah, so the guy with the baton <laughs> was the one that saw Yeji without a helmet. And there's a fine water knife on the other side of the <laughs> of the, the thing that fell down as well. But, how, how, how about this? Instead of like, say, like a kind of more cinematic, same thing happens, but like, you know the the gate starts the gate starts coming like I'm I, I like gate starts going and I like make a make a kind of a, a dive for it but it's like a terrible dive because I'm concussed and like the gate comes down and like with my hand like if it's, there's if there's like prongs on the bottom and like my mm-hmm. hands there and the knife's on the other side and I look at it and I have to let go of the knife to get my hand through basically. Sure. Yeah. I like yeah. it. As long as yeah. your knife's on the other side. <laughs> yeah, knife's on the other side. I, I thought it was like more it's like, no, that kind yeah. of moment. Rather than catching on a belt, which seems it wasn't as cinematic. <laughs> cool. Yeah. And then so does I wonder if like we turn into the <laughs> the 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 moment when somebody has to like run up and grab Syria and like pull her towards the truck and you guys like rip out of there are you so lost without your knife or is it just kind of like and then you stumble to the car i i i i it, it are like uh lots of like pirate swearings and then like and then run towards the front towards the truck and throw myself in the back cool so, okay so. yeah i think that i don't think we'll do a roll to get out of here you silence the alarm and all that pretty quickly. So, and I think that you're y'all are gonna get some serious heat for this anyway. So, yeah, it it'll be fine. So, I have I have an idea how how we get out of this. Uh, sure. Uh, and I'm willing to to. This is kind of flashbacky, but okay. um, um, I'm willing. So I'm willing to pay for it. But I think what happened. Um, while we were doing this entire chaos thing, I think um, Cross went and um, basically off the guards on the inside um, of the compound, and Gebreich got us a um, escape vehicle outside. So we're not like running with this car that's clearly identifiable um, out of the city, right? So I think. Um, uh, once we all kind of uh, get into the thing, um, into in, into the truck, and we drive towards the um, gate, uh, Cross joins us and points us into a direction, and uh, we kind of or like I, I'd be half like maybe um, crashing the truck against some some structure. We get out, and there's Gabriel pulls up and and has an escape vehicle of some kind. Sure. Um, yeah, that sounds cool. Maybe just one stress. Yeah, awesome. And uh, so, do, does is does the other one just like blow up then? So it's not traceable or whatever. I mean, the the other truck was the. Um, uh, I mean, it's pretty clear, I think, to what happens to the other truck, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It it definitely serves uh, as some kind of chaos, but um, that truck belonged to them, so they would have been able to trace it if we try to use that for a getaway. That's what I'm thinking. We yeah. need to like switch vehicles at some point, right? Yeah. yeah. So everybody thinks that you're going for the truck, but then by the time they get like wrench the grate open, yeah, or they follow us underneath a bridge or something, they find the truck, but not us, right. and that's where we did the the, the cool. Switching yeah, vehicles. I like that even more. Sweet. And then you you make your way to 
the community guarded. <laughs> cool. Okay, so payoff. You get two rep by default. Higher tier, yes. Per tier higher, so plus two is four rep. Uh, uh, yep. What else? Do, do, do. People, yeah, people know this happened for sure. <laughs> In terms of Jewel, it'll be interesting. I was thinking the score was taking more of this stuff. So, yeah, but somebody didn't. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of funny. Um, I like that. So maybe you'll still get two, two jewels, but I think it could have been like eight, right? <laughs> maybe even maybe even ten because it's like a proprietary amazing drug or something. So you'll get two jewels, and. Yeah. And does I'm curious, does JG be like, oh, that's all I could grab? It was like a firefight, oh crazy stuff, or is it just straight up like yeah. nah? I mean I think like <laughs> Yeji is probably like pretty direct to the rest of the group that is just like that did not that did not go well. That was not good. Uh and uh yeah. And so like I think that she kind of like is kind of like leaning into the chaos um to like keep them from pointing any fingers at her for not getting more. <laughs> right. Okay. So in terms of heat, what are we thinking, team? Uh, zero heat, smooth and quiet? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Two heat contains standard exposure. Four, loud and chaotic. Six, wild, devastating exposure. I think it's definitely at least... Um... Uh, it was chaotic. We didn't do anything with, with big explosions, though. Yeah, yeah. And the so, fog could have made it a lot worse if the fog wasn't there, I think. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we could do four. If it's a high-profile target, it's plus one heat um, or well-connected. It's definitely high-profile. So we're so, at five? Yes, we and... Do we do have firewall, so yeah. we don't take an extra heat for killing. Right. It did happen on hostile turf, though. Yeah. So six, six heat. You're not at war. And killing people you don't have to deal with because you're lucky. <laughs> so it's That's still a fair six, amount. Six. Yep. And so what are you at now for heat? At six. Oh, nice. Yeah, you guys finally got some. Hmm. Cool. <laughs> and let's roll entanglements then. Who wants to roll it? Sure, I'll roll it. Why not? Cool. Still just 2d6. Yep. And the lower one counts. So. So how do I roll this then? Just uh, type in uh, slash r two uh, d six. Or you can click roll fortune on the carry on the yeah. crew sheet and okay, I'll do that. Put, in, put in zero dice. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Roll fortune and uh, how many dice? Zero. Yeah, it? zero dice on the fortune, yeah. Okay. Two. Flipped or interrogation. Oh, I like that. <laughs> So what what ones let's see Matthias, what are the factions that you have here? One of the PC's rivals arranges for one of your contacts, patrons, clients, or a group of your customers to switch allegiances due to the heat on you. So loyal to another faction, especially after y'all being dicks to the coil. I like it. <laughs> yeah, to the coil or um the other one that 
we haven't seen it all yet that you might find interesting. We have minus one with the auditors. Oh. I don't quite remember why, but we do. <laughs> right. Rare tier three. Uh, I think it's probably from one of the. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, I know what I want to do. The who was it that had the ex cryptographer? It's Yeji, right? Yeah, she has it coming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I think it's like a little bit of time after, right? Like you've uh, done your stuff, you're back at the community garden. Yeji, um, when Elif sends like a, a meet or something to you, where do you think they usually meet your contact? Sorry, you're breaking up a little bit there. Then, oh, when where do you think you usually meet Elif? Um, oh, that's a good question. Um, probably <laughs> at probably at the hunt, the uh, that underground casino kind of thing. Oh yeah, with the the yeah, where you indulge, right? Yeah. Cool. Okay, I think. Um, yeah, they set up a meet there, and then that can be fictional justification for you doing Vice later, too, perhaps. But um, what do you think? Uh, have we introduced Elif yet? I don't think so, right? For what they look like and stuff. Do you have a picture? An I, idea? Uh, I could open up the Pinterest board, though. Sure. Great ideas. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, I'm pulling up the link. Ooh, you got some new ones in here. Um, man, I kind of like this dude. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. So, yeah, I think they're wearing that as well. So it's like a a good looking older caucasian gentleman with like white wispy hair in a blue very nice suit who probably since they're an ex cryptographer i think they like sort of were was in on the ground floor and then did the payout action right and now they're just sort of living the dream mm -hmm. and i think maybe you're playing blackjack like just for the purposes of this scene right and you do like the hit me thing and you bust and that's when he kind of sidles up to yeji and is like you never knew when to quit did you yeji <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's better to stop when you're ahead um i know when to quit and i i, I quit when i quit <laughs> eloquent <laughs> um, I think he kind of smiles and looks at Yeji kind of like sadly right for a moment and how long have you known Elif has it been like forever like 20 years I think it's probably something? yeah I, I feel like he probably had connections to um, the syndicate that I was a part of out in the forge um, yeah so they yeah. Yeah. Maybe there were flames at one point, um, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think he steps to like behind you, puts his hand on your shoulder and squeezes like a little bit too tight. And he's like, I never had that problem. And then when you like turn around, he's just gone. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mechanically, you don't have that friend anymore. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Let's see. Yeah, I think a small little thing. Sure. Yeah. It might just be free play without a role, probably. Sure. This is us when we return. We don't have, or it be assumed we have like maybe our typical debrief. We haven't ever seen what it actually looks like. 
but this time this is um uh the steve is like not cool at all um he just stomps off and like right walks right past all of you um and and uh and you like hear the slamming of the workshop door because right. i actually stressed out at the end of that with did that you last yes oh interesting so what did you take uh, i'm not quite sure yet okay. what what the best fit is but all right well with 20 minutes left let's make sure to spotlight the new people with downtime so sure. uh i don't know if you guys have a specific idea of what you want to see in this fiction but uh let's do syria first do you have a you do you have an idea for your first of two downtime actions um i wanted to um uh i <clears throat> i lost my fine water knife and i know it's like hard to get one of those but right. i know i know that like bringing back information about this like new high tech screen better is good so um, my thought was I was going to be like uh, taking a look at this and starting to uh, study it um, and uh, see if I can like with that and you know, like research and like see like how it's different than the than the than the screen that we have and see if it can be reproduced and I can bring that information back to my people and basically use that as trade to get another one of these knives basically. Oh, okay. So here's a question. Does Yeji let this stuff out of her sight? <laughs> That's a really good question. I feel like she's keeping it pretty close to the chest. Um, Where are you storing it? Is this going to be a, a ghosting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it could be. I think that she's... I think she's just carrying it until... Because the last... Mm -hmm. The last job, I mean, we have pretty good relationships with the a relationship with the split peas, and it was like almost instantaneous. Like they were waiting for us. Um, so I think like partly like her expectation is that that will happen. Um, so maybe she's not. Yeah, maybe she does kind of like when they get back and there's they're not there. Um, she just assumes that they will be there soon. So maybe there is like a little window of time where it's kind of like, well, I kind of actually like you were lost in that warehouse for a little bit. Do you want to spend one stress as a flashback to say that we like flashback to you taking a little bit longer to get out to grab one of those things? And that's Me? why you lost your water knife. Yeah. I like that a lot. That's good. Cool. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Um, yeah, yeah I, I, you know, and I, in I, I found some in my, in the confusion, and like I'm I left, and you see like my water knife left there in behind in the crate. Like I grabbed a bunch and just had put it down and didn't pick it up because I'm a little bit disorganized. Okay, well, uh, sure. Or okay, well, I I think that we can say that the water knife was lost like that. I just think that we know why you took even longer, right? Like right, maybe exactly. before the flashback, we were like, huh, okay. Like it was knocked out or she was knocked around a little bit. Okay. But then yeah. the flashback, we'll say, we were like, oh. Yeah, I totally ran the wrong direction and then stumbled onto the crate and like, okay. oh, and grabbed it and like, and yeah. And... Okay. So let's do a downtime action starting a long-term project. Uh, yeah, totally. And you're just trying to like make a a copy of the formula or something like that mm -hmm. yeah okay um i think that would probably be study what do you think yep that was my plan cool. yeah i'm I, I my character is kind of like i kind of go to detail but it's this weird like philosopher pirate who used to be kind of a boat captain but like lost lost her boat and has like since has kind of like cha has gone into the city for for it, and uh, yeah, and so you know really talks like big about the acts of God and and how like it's you know there's a reason it's come to be and this weirdness. So that's kind of my weirdness between being a quirk but also like 
uh, you know, being rough and tumble at the same time. Cool. So yeah. it's it's downtime, so you can just roll study and yeah, I'll do that. Uh, don't worry about your position and effect. We just want to yeah. see how many ticks you get on the clock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Um, three ticks on a. Uh, thematically, let's just make it a four clock, and then if you want, you can spend okay. uh, one jewel to bump it up to a success. Yeah, totally doing that. Cool. <laughs> I like that. Okay, so we just see you, like, I don't know, using some sort of technology to copy the print or whatever, right? It'll still have to be studied and manufactured and stuff like that, but you right, have, like, right the formula yeah. <laughs> yeah i i have like i have these like you know i i take the stuff and drops it into i have like a you know a chrono analyzer and analyzing the the elements in it and all that stuff yeah cool and then jackson jewel do you have a downtime action you want to do um yeah sure so i think uh i think when we get back from the the score um all of the all of the we're all in a room together and i think the camera sort of shows jackson being distant both physically and emotionally even in this room just among you know his his teammates um and i think we get you know a good you know couple of couple of shots of him walking around the city uh, again just very distant from from everything going on and uh something that that never really came up in the session but uh the person he's close to adia um i mentioned at the very beginning is is like the only the only family he really has so i think we see him uh meeting with her and uh for the first time sort of uh, not not seeming so um, emotionally distant or removed. Cool. So you're indulging a vice? Yeah, I think so. The obligation. Cool. Her. So on your character sheet, you have That's a button one. for that. You can just click. Um, which which one? It should say indulge vice. Uh, probably oh, below yeah. friends. Boom, so you get four. Nice. Four gone. Cool. And then Syria, do you have another one? Um Yeah, I think I'm gonna engage my vice. Oh, I, I realized I, I have moistware, so I was totally probably using moistware to analyze the screen of some kind. Oh totally, totally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, dropping in a bowl of soup or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nan nanite soup, um, stirring it with uh, and um, so, yeah, I'm gonna engage my vice. Which so I'm gonna go to like I have a I have this bartender that I go to, and he uh, he always know, like he sees the stragglers and like the people that come in and like can point me. He points me in the right direction of like new people with obviously stories of you know surviving some ask some. And uh, so I, I go to the bar and there points me over and there's like a, a really uh, uh, kind of like shell-shocked, uh, pretty shell-shocked looking uh, woman uh, and uh, like middle-aged woman um, in the, you know, having a plate of food. Um, and I, uh, uh, I, I, but I, I, I tell him I'm gonna like pay for her meal and like bring a second. She looks like she's like eating like the the worst. She's eating like the worst grub there. Like the only thing she can afford right now. And right. like I, I pay for like a bigger meal to come to the table and like go to the table and sit down and like and uh, it like as soon as like the meal arrives, I like. Like meal rest like her and me, and like I, I sit down and and uh, and just introduce myself like 
Hi, I'm uh my name's I I'm uh Syria. You look like a you've come in uh from some hard weather and like to start like trying to chat her up and like get her to like tell tell us tell the story and like hear like what uh happened basically. Okay. Cool. And so yeah, same thing, indulge the vice. Mm -hmm. That's a cool vice. Nice. Bam. That's pretty good. <laughs> yep. It is a good. cool vice, yeah. <laughs> it felt really made sense for my character. Yeah. So Yeah. Cool. And then let's wrap up Jackson. Are you uh, Matthias and Mike? I was thinking we'll just do downtime next time with yeah. the whole crew. Is that cool? Yeah. Okay. So Jackson so I, I get I get rid of six stress from that, right? Basically. Yeah, six. You clear six, yeah. And then, um, Jackson, do you have one more? Yeah, so I, uh, I, I'm not sure if this is, um, if this is appropriate or not, but I think going along with um, what I was doing before with my obligation to Adia, I think, um, I think I'm training her um, with the whole gun thing. And I think the end game for that is uh, that we're going to try to get revenge on Javier, my former protege who betrayed me. Um, so would that be a clock worthy thing? Sure. Do you, do you think that hmm, so the long term project is to take down your rival? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and this is going towards that by training this person. Yeah, mm. I think so. Well, I, let's let's make it like you training as well. So maybe you could put sure. a trainer in. Let's see, you guys are cleaners. So if you train in insider prowess, you get two XP in either of those tracks if you want. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll do insight. Cool. So you can take two pips in that. And then in the future, if we see this character again, then you could do like an actual long term project, I think, would like hunting this person down and like taking them sure. out and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. But the fiction of it I like is, uh, yeah, you're training your this person. Cool. So let's do XP real quick. Let's start with the quirk. So do people think that the quirk addressed the challenge with knowledge or technology? Call the fog up. Mm -hmm. And knowledge, I think you brought up in your uh, downtime, right? Just doing yeah, this. Yeah, totally do that. Yeah. Taking that stuff. What do people think? Two? One? I'd say two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. And did you express your beliefs, drives, heritage, or background? I think a lot of that happened. Right? Uh, yeah, a bit. So maybe one. But nothing drastic, I think. You think so? <laughs> uh, I think I that. I think. You were oh. referencing your heritage and your background quite a bit. Oh yeah, the, like, this is kind of a gimme, right? And all, uh, on the session, you create a character. Yeah, like true. Okay, got it. That's the first time in the fiction that we know anything about your character, and it's a lot, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes sense that like I was expressing it, and like I needed that screen for my peoples, and yeah, and and my water knife is really a big thing. Yeah. So that and, makes sense. Uh, did you struggle with issues from your vice root or trauma? Uh, I, I definitely struggled at dealing with that concussion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's not trauma. That's uh, yeah, it's just a wound. Uh, I don't think I struggled with my vice. I just went and did it. Cool. So, yeah. so for that XP, you could place it wherever you like on your playbook track. The stress track, which doesn't exist on your playbook at the moment, <laughs> or right. or the uh, insight 
prowess or resolve tracks. Got it. And what about the Steve? Yeah, so I had one desperate roll on insight. Mm -hmm. um, and I addressed the challenge with technical skill that was from the uh, whole uh, cybernetic implants thingy. And um, I created the uh, chaos in the warehouse um, by letting the shelves drop. Yes, you did. So that was <laughs> with mayhem. Yes. Um, for you expressed your beliefs, drives, heritage, or background. Um, I think one side is beliefs. Um, um, we saw the Steve um, trying to be like, okay, if we're working as a team, then we're working together. And uh, um, even, even if unsuccessfully, trying to coordinate with Heiji. <laughs> Um, but also um, uh, working together with the others, like trusting the others, right? At the point where there were four guards and I put my guns to, to two, I was trusting that we have backup, the others will deal with it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the other thing is we already, before I took Unstable, mm -hmm. before I traumat, um, I was already going, the Steve, when tension gets high, he kind of gets close up to the edge, like with the whole uh, standing up and f emptying the entire clips of his guns um, and, and walking backwards without cover, that thing. Uh, mm -hmm. So he's, he's likely to go over the edge. So um, <laughs> He's likely to be unstable yeah. next session. So another, <laughs> yeah, another two there. Um, but yeah, I didn't. Did not have any issues yet um, that I needed to just struggle with because this was right at the end. So no, no from the last one. Cool. What about Yeji? Um. So I did not have any desperate actions, um, but I think I addressed a couple challenges with stealth or evasion. Like that was basically what I was completely leaning into. So I'm going to take a couple there. Or what do you think? Yeah, it's a it's actually stealth or precision, which oh, is what you were doing with the the crypto locks. More perfect. Yeah. So. <laughs> um. So yeah, I think two makes a lot of sense there. Uh, express beliefs, drives, heritage, or background. I think so. Um, I think there was a lot of that sort of like she doesn't like the attention on her kind of thing, but also like is yeah. Well, you you mess people up like the score because of your beliefs. So yes, well that's true too. <laughs> um, and you seem to prefer working alone, like your part you handle it on your on yourself. Yeah, she kind well, of. That's a question. Um, if that is the case, I think it's also her role. So I, it'll be interesting to see how that kind of like shapes out as we continue playing. I think. Um, but yeah, so I think that that happened a few times and then struggled with issues from vice, root, or traumas. I think the root thing, like tying in the, the disease, um, is, yeah, um, continuing to be a detriment to her. So I think like one there. Mm -hmm. um, sure. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Cool. And finally, Jackson Jewel. Um, yeah, so I didn't have any desperate actions. Um, I think that I could make a case for addressing a challenge with tracking or perseverance. Um, when, yeah. the, uh, when the gate was coming down, I had to stop that and then move on to what I was actually trying to do. Well, and also, uh, I deliberately tested your perseverance, right? I said she was fucking with you when she shot you in the arm, and you were still like, that's yeah. fine, I keep going, right? Yeah, that's yeah, that's excellent point, too. Um, so, yeah, I guess two there mm -hmm. um and then i don't i don't think i really expressed any beliefs drives heritage or background i think uh, that i think that you did because <laughs> again on the well, first session it's the everything is new about you right oh sure i suppose yeah so. That's also you made a point to make your uh downtime specifically about your what your drive and your belief was yeah we know who you care yeah. about yeah. And what you care about. It's, it's a good point. Um, so, 
one or two there. That's up to you, but I would probably say uh, two. I think yeah, I'd say two. Of, yeah. All right, two, uh, and then I uh, didn't really struggle with anything. Um, I mean, I suppose my route is is pretty isolating, being a tipper. Um, so there was the emotional distance, but I, I'm not sure I really struggled with that mm-hmm. session. So, yeah. Cool. See you for them. And Matthias, do you want to do the crew? Yep. Um, we have... So execute a successful accident, disappearance, murder, or ransom operation. Well, we made the the argument here is we made the um, the uh, the samples disappear. Well, and you also definitely murdered some peeps. <laughs> yeah, that, that wasn't quite the point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's say one, right? Not two, definitely not two. Mm-hmm. Content with challenges above your current station. I think, yeah, that's a given, right? Yes. Um, but only one, like this. That's the thing in the score, right? Both of your crew's reputation or develop a new one. So we're known for being professional. So I'd argue we did fulfill it because... This whole this entire score was not as much for us to make profit. Like this wasn't a job someone paid us high, uh, a lot of money for. This was because ones we allied with needed like our help, right? This yeah. came out of the last entanglement, and um, um, as prof- we we're professionals, so we uh, did as they wanted. Or like we fulfilled um, our and our side of that yeah. allyship, right? especially since they knew it was like not really your thing, right? Yeah, that they were asking you to do. So potentially we could get two here, because yes, uh, in contrast to what happened before, we were this was a bloody job. <laughs> so. Um, We accepted a lot of heat for it and went straight into it without like any hesitation. Mm-hmm. What's a g- good one for that though? Um, would it just be um, unscu- unscrupulous or killers or? Um, mm. It could be something like. Yeah, I don't know. D- deadly, I don't know. Deadly, driven. Uh, could even be like loyal, right? You took on yeah. a mission for your allies, and that could be a thing that you want spreading around, right? So that would mean um, that people know why we did this, mm-hmm. or know all the background. Like I, w- I was thinking really angling towards something where that says um like that goes together with because we took firewall so that sounds like we're expecting to be doing murder in the future that's true that's true sure um, yeah if you think deadly works and stuff yeah yeah and we also took deadly mm-hmm. yeah yeah i don't know what the like there might be a better word but what the yeah. rest of the table thinks yeah, deadly. Sure. Professional, deadly. That I like deadly. Good for a crew of, uh, Phoenix. Yeah. yeah. Especially with Jackson blowing people's heads off and shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how many people are out there. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then me and me gutting them. Yeah. 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 And then we have uh, express the gold strives in a conflict or essential nature of the crew. I think that happened a lot. Yeah, definitely in a conflict, right? Yeah. And this is where, like, the loyalty thing comes in, I guess. Yeah, because, like, you have one person who 
stole the drug and is gonna try to get it to smugglers and shit. And then you have Yeji who's like, oh hell no, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it seems like there was a little bit of a little bit of strife over how to handle the mission too, right? Like uh, the Steve just blowing people's heads off and stuff, and then escalating it to mayhem and stuff. So yeah, yep. I think it was highlighted in this episode. <laughs> Cool. Uh, that still puts us one away from crew advancement, but cool. I guess we'll get that next time. All right. I'm going to stop it. <laughs> <laughs>